Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Uh, give me a moment to get prepared. As usual. Um, I am feeling a bit better today. That's good, but I still have some coughing attacks, should I say. <laughs> From time to time, I start coughing and then I can't stop. So yeah. Um, but hopefully it's going to happen less today on, the, on today's stream than yesterday. <clears throat> mm. All right. So, yeah, I, I didn't even say what I'm doing today. Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking what is going to be the goal for today. <laughs> Didn't really think about it. Yeah, a keypad. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't want to actually do a too, too long of a stream today. So maybe it's going to be like two hours. Uh, Okay, so, uh, yeah, so here, here we go. Uh, welcome to the stream again. I can, I think I can begin. Uh, oh, how does this actually work? It doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So, welcome to the stream, everyone. Uh, yeah, so. What is going on? Uh, yesterday I made a little CRT uh, CRT monitor display. Well, TV. Uh, it's basically like a TV. Oh yeah, by the way, I, I, I even forgot what was the name of it. <laughs> uh, somebody told me yesterday on stream, what's the name of this specific CRT uh, that like portable video thing i forgot i don't know there's some pvc cvp ctv i don't know something like that uh, anyway that was what i actually made so oh yeah let me actually show you let me actually show it to you before i do anything uh, oh i didn't turn on the output okay so yeah didn't even open the project great <laughs> uh 
Uh, okay, uh, so yeah, today, yesterday I made this and implemented a uh, little, yeah, viewport based screen in Godot. Uh, I, I displayed some text. I made an ASCII display that has a few drawing functions for putting text at any position and drawing windows with border characters. I didn't actually do that. Why did I put that I did it? I didn't actually do that. Okay, I did make a little, you know, uh, display of the limits. And then I added some issuing commands through keys, but actually I don't want to do issuing commands through keys in my final game. Oh, look, nice, nice planet. Uh, where is the station? There it is. Okay. Anyway, let's start. Hello. Hello, Anton. Hello, Kizo. Okay. Let me show you what we have so far. <clears throat> so, here's the game. Uh, and right now, I'm just spawned in front of the TV so that I can check it out. I can make it a little bit closer. Mm. You can even spot that I'm that I'm moving backwards and now I'm moving slower slightly because you know TV has a has weight. It ha it's like 10 kilos and and I am 70 kilos. So there's actually you can see the reaction action and reaction, right, going on here, which is cool. Uh anyway, so uh right now uh, I've added one knob to change the brightness. You can turn off ex uh, completely. I was thinking that I don't know if I should actually turn brightness completely or just put it to minimum because then people will be like, uh, you know, they will they they will be really confused with like uh, a broken screen. Uh, but yeah, I should definitely have a power button. Oh, I completely forgot to to say that I want to have some power buttons. Okay power button for the screen of course so they don't have to waste uh, energy on it and here you can see a little bit of an ASCII display and there's a little ASCII bear that I just copied from internet yesterday and uh, yeah and here you can see a little console thing you can type in things well right now uh, with the keyboard and the problem is that this is also working with other stuff right F is flashlight so when I <laughs> press F, I actually turn on and off the flashlight. And when you press enter, it will actually submit and like put it over there. So, uh, well, today I'm going to make a little uh, processor of that thing. So right now it just adds it to the list and displays it on top. So uh, yeah, but basically it works. You can type in stuff, you know, it gets pushed up and it has like a history of commands. Yeah, but actually, uh, I want to turn off the keyboard because you shouldn't, at least in my initial, um, well, actually I'm thinking about maybe later adding in uh, full control of the keyboard. But right now I actually only need numbers, numbers and a few special keys. Uh, and so for that, I don't, I'm not going to have a full keyboard. Uh, I am going to have just a, uh, a few numbers w which are going to be physical buttons. So yeah, so I don't have to actually have this like keyboard input. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, yeah, how, how does this work? Well, <laughs> it's funny because this bear is, is kind of like a desktop background. Uh, well, this was just a test, right? I didn't intend it to be a desktop background, but it looks really good. By the way, yes, the TV is a rigid body, so you can just throw it around, you know? Uh, yeah, and it doesn't break or anything. And yeah, you can actually control it <laughs> from anywhere right now. Oh yeah, and I've actually added a few more. Uh, I completely forgot that you have a, two more screens, which basically copy the same I was just testing. I was just testing how it looks like with multiple multiples. And if you press R, you know, if you, I'm just typing something, right, uh, like thrust, and then it restarts. <laughs> because R is also restart key. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, I want to say that I want to actually <coughs> uh, remove that. So yeah, that's what I did yesterday. And yeah, it's also, this is a nice uh, CRT that I made yesterday with some references from the real from the real mirror space station 
Uh, there is a little bit of a problem that this knob is too like is uh, the same plastic as the screen, so you can't even see it. You can't see what's going on here. So maybe I'll, I'm going to change the style of the knob. And of course, it's actually colliding with the with the side there. Okay. Anyway, that's what I did yesterday. Uh, this is what I did yesterday. Okay. So today. <coughs> Yeah, today I want to add <clears throat> a power button to turn off the screen, turn it on. Uh, yeah, let's say limit brightness, limit brightness of the knob. Okay, and I'm going to make a keypad uh, out of buttons, make a useful computer. Yeah, make a, make a useful computer to do something, right? Uh, like changing programs, so you're gonna type in some things, and you will be able to switch from one program to the other. <clears throat> uh, a little handshake. Well, a handshake is just for like radio connection, something that I'm planning for for the future. Um, a checklist program, perhaps, that just lists some some text for you. Uh, and yeah, I don't know if I actually need to do like some kind of a program infrastructure. Some kind of program classes. Maybe, maybe I'm, I am going to do something like that um, instead. Uh, or maybe I should just do enums <laughs> and like, okay, if program this, do that. If program that, do that. Uh, yeah, I'll probably I'm probably going to uh, implement with enums first, and then we're going to go with classes. Uh, and yeah, then I was just thinking about like, what is the possible thing that I can implement today? And maybe like a little docking ports status you know which is closed which is open uh, throughout the whole station and yeah something like that uh, if there's time i'm gonna make a little pressure simulator between the modules so uh, yeah like a little uh, there could be a program that like detects all the pressure in the station uh, this is a cool mechanic drag it around plug into things run programs yeah this is sort of what I'm thinking about. But of course, right now there's no computer, right? It's just the screen that just magically my keyboard is interacting with the screen. But yeah, there, there's actually going to be a computer between me and the screen. So yes, you should be able to plug in different screens into your computers, right? If, it, if a screen breaks, you can just replace it. <clears throat> that is the idea. Uh, anyway, anyway, yes. And yeah, but this is the bear <laughs> that I copied as an ASCII art. But yeah, I, I was just, I, today I was like, yeah, let me just remove it from the stream to do. And then I felt like, mm, I feel a little bad for the bear. Let's, let's actually keep it. Let's actually keep it hanging there. You know, just to remind me, <laughs> just to remind me that uh, uh, th this happened on this date. Uh, yeah. And but before before I begin, I actually want I actually want to show you something. I want to show you something that I I started making last year or two years ago. I can't even remember. Uh, it's a space a space flight timeline. It is completely unconnected to this project, but it is connected to space. And right now it is uh, unable to connect. <laughs> but I am going to actually open up a new VS Code instance. Uh, and let me open it because today I opened it and I was like, how, how does it work? Let's see. Uh, open recent timeline. Okay. So this is like a web thing that I was making and, uh, <clears throat> written in TypeScript, which of course compiles to JavaScript. And it's very, I'm not a front end developer. So I, I was like basically learning TypeScript with this thing. And, uh, and yeah, it's not very modern. It's just, it's just something that I wanted to do. Uh, so yeah, let me actually start a server and show you, show you what's going on. Ah, here it is. Uh, I did actually tweet about it maybe a year or two years ago. I can't remember when, when I actually worked in this, uh, maybe it was two years, maybe it was even three years ago, but anyway, uh, this is a little timeline you can actually move around you can move it with your click and you can also zoom in like this and as you can see you see years 
and it's a full screen timeline and it's a full screen timeline of uh, of space flight and I wanted to make this for um, yeah it was it's just like a thing which I, I had an idea about because I'm, I really love reading about space and all the timelines and all, all the stuff. But then I always, I'm always confused, like what was happening at the same time? And, and then I was like, well, would it be cool to actually make a little timeline thing? So yeah, uh, but I, what I started with is I only started with the space shuttles. I wanted, I first, I wanted to make a little space shuttle explorer, space shuttle program, <laughs> sort of. Uh, but then I ended up thinking about why not make for the whole space flight where is buran yes uh i'm going to add the buran buran as well although i was thinking to, to only use it this for uh like human space flight buran didn't have any crew <laughs> uh but i am going to add it as like honorable mention um yeah and if you actually zoom in more you're gonna see individual missions and you can see the titles here uh, and you can click on each of the mission and you see here the, um, you know, a little bit of data, which is, uh, I remember the, I spent the most time, <laughs> I spent the most time scrubbing Wikipedia for this data. And it was a horror. It was a horror because uh, I was just making this, I, I realized that I'm going to have to, because Spatial had like 135 missions, if I'm, if I'm mis if I'm not mistaken, and I was like, man, copying all this data by hand is gonna take forever. And then I was like, okay, let's make a little scrubber. And then it took me like three days to make a scrubber uh, of the info box. Well, you know what is an info box? You know, if you go to a to some uh, STS mission, um, uh, this is the info box, right? This is what Wikipedia calls it, the info box. And it, and it has all this data, all this nice data. But the thing is that it's in incredibly inconsistent. You know, uh, sometimes the members are going to be written with a comma. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they have just like a name dot, right? Sometimes, Sometimes the numbers, sometimes there's going to be like kilograms and no LB. Sometimes there's going to be. So like just reading all this data from each of the pages was a horror. <laughs> How are you doing today? Hello. Uh, I'm doing better, but, you know, still I have a little bit of cough, cough attacks. <laughs> Look, at... <coughs> as soon as I, I mentioned cough, I started coughing. I shouldn't, I should forget about it. Uh, yeah. And anyway. Yeah, I was actually, uh, I made a little scrubber, which means like a uh, like a program that goes to each of the pages <laughs> and then takes the info box, extracts the info box, and then uh, um, um, kind of uh, processes the, this data. And I came up with this. Uh, it's a gigantic, gigantic table. It's a tab separated table. Uh, which uh, which has everything, you know, extracted from the info box. And so I realized that this is way too, like when I, when I opened this project today, I was like, oh my God, why did I do this? Why did I do this with a tab separated <laughs> table? Look at this. At least VS Code has this... Uh, like uh you know colors coloring of <coughs> coloring of uh tabs uh of columns sorry in a in a in a table but yeah anyway um yeah and then today i thought like maybe maybe i should translate everything to json <laughs> so today i started like doing a little bit of like, okay, what would it look like? Uh, you have a, you know, changing table into the JSON. And then I made uh, for two Vostoks for the, for the first flight by Yuri Gagarin and the second one by German Titov. Um, and uh, yeah, and I actually added them into the whole thing. So I have both the tab separated values and there it is. Here are the two Vostoks. But you have to zoom in. You have to zoom in a lot because they're very short. Uh, and a cool thing, cool thing is when you zoom in, you can see how long they were, right? This is like 
12th, uh, what is it, 12th April 1961. Uh, and you can see that it just took like two hours, right? Well, you can't click on it because there, it's, it's unclickable. Uh, the new JSON are unclickable for now. Uh, but yeah, and uh, yeah, it only shows up Vostok and it, yeah, I know that it's terrible. Well, this is just a proof of concept, okay? The the graphics is terrible. I'm not a big, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not satisfied with the graphics. Like you can't even see. Yeah, but yeah, anyway, I just added these for, for a little test. And then also today I made this like a rectangle for the space shuttle, like showing that this is the space shuttle program. And then I'm gonna add one for Soyuz and you know for all all of the other programs. Uh, but yeah, that is what I was doing today a bit. Uh, and yeah, for all of these, <coughs> well, by the way, I don't know why the space shuttle program starts in 1980. I think this was just a test because I don't really have. Oh yeah, by the way, today I also found online if you if you just Google. TSV to JSON converter. Of course, there's a converter online. And then it just threw this table and it created this. It created a JSON, but the problem is <laughs> that it made everything empty as well. And I don't actually need any of this empty data, right? I can I can remove all that. Uh, <clears throat> and yeah, and then I have to also restructure it a bit. So I'm gonna do a little bit of data beautification uh on some not not today but some other day uh yeah and um yeah so let's oh yeah this is the space shuttle block that i just made so i don't know why oh yeah i just took a date from 1980 to, to, to 2001 but i should probably uh yeah well when did it actually begin and end well it was it was on the beginning of the first mission, right? Let's see, where's the first mission? Uh, this is the date of the launch. So let's add that one. Launch date and the final shuttle landing date. Where's the landing date? It's probably this one, right? Landing date, yes. And one other thing is that I don't know if this is UTC or not. I'm not sure. I think it is UTC because I remember the landing. Uh, STS-135 landing was in the night. So this must be uh, uh, UTC time. Anyway, uh, this is the stuff ChatGPT is good for, for making simple converter tools. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Never tried it actually. For maybe I can throw this uh, the table at it. Uh, anyway, yeah. Let's see if this rebuilds. Oh yeah, not the main JS, but the TS. Mm, oh yeah, I need to start the process. How does it work? Uh, I keep forgetting. I'm just gonna build. And I, why does the Rust analyzer always start? In every project, when I press <laughs> Control Shift B, the Rust analyzer starts. And yeah, maybe I should just remove Rust completely because I'm not using it anyway. Uh, watch, yeah, let's do a watch. Let's see if it's going to reconstruct itself automatically. There it is. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, so the space shuttle now starts with STS-1, although it's super <coughs> super hard to see. And yeah, STS-1 was also very short. Uh, but it was still two, day, uh, two days or three days. Yeah, it was two days. Yeah, and then it ends with the last one. And the reason why I put these lines until the end is because they're still they're still alive. These three shuttles, right? The the other two exploded. Unfortunately, well, the Challenger 
was destroyed in a um, on a launch 1986 at the beginning of 1986 January uh, so you can see here this is the this is the mission but it doesn't have any duration it's just it just ends there this is like a special case that I actually made you can see the line goes up to here and then it stops this is exactly where <laughs> where Challenger exploded uh, and uh, and then there is Columbia which has which was destroyed on landing so actually they they finished the miss mission and they were coming back and then on the way back it perished yeah unfortunately but yeah that that's the history uh, and uh, and then I just left these three shuttles Discovery Atlantis and Endeavor in like okay they they uh, they just continue but it's super interesting to actually see mm, let me turn off the sound of my phone uh, what I really love about this timeline is that you can really see like what was how how the space shuttle program was like uh, progressed right uh, you had um, uh, yeah first you had STS yeah this is STS two. okay let me actually remove this it is a little bit annoying um, let's remove the what was the thing texts wait this is the new thing that I added Ah, hiding yeah I actually added some hiding visible should be true but that doesn't that doesn't matter uh, anyway um, yeah so I basically this is for automatic text hiding and I don't yeah let's actually let's actually show all the text but now <laughs> it's overlapping so yeah I need to I need to figure out how to not overlap text and I guess I should just find like see like okay is there enough space and then fade in but yeah you should be able like at some point you should be able to see all of them uh, or I can like stagger them I can make them you know uh, make them like zigzag or something uh, but yeah uh, so yeah one one more thing that I added these colors are super hard to see oh and by the way I figured out today that of course I designed this to be white but I can actually turn on dark reader <laughs> for this site and and there it is yeah so <laughs> I have actually automatic night night mode um, but yeah I should probably change it into night mode um, yeah the thing is that Thing, uh, yeah, the way I designed this whole timeline is like, uh, you know, this means these. Uh, this means the shuttles are on the ground, right? This is the ground, and then this is in space. The upper upper part is in space, and so I was thinking like, oh, maybe I should make like a little planet here or something, like where it's showing that they're they're on the ground and this is in space. So yeah, you can actually see that Columbia was in space during this time, and then this is how much it spent on the ground. Uh, yeah, after the first mission, it was like more than half a year uh, to the second mission and the third. Uh, yeah, and then they started doing really, really like, you know, they, they started, they, they got into um, like a really high, how do you say, workload, high dynamic. And this is like the 1985 is like the golden year of the space shuttle. Uh, look how many space shuttle missions there were and these these two are like like 10 days apart this is crazy like you know what is this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah basically 11 or 10 year, 10 um, days apart this never happened again uh this was the you know they they actually was were planning uh to do like a, up to 80 missions a year which was incredible but it was absolutely crazy uh they they never accomplished 80 missions a year uh they this is the maximum they did right it was one two three four five six seven eight nine nine missions just nine missions out of 80 they were planning uh yeah anyway they really wanted to make this like bus to space but it was completely impossible um yeah and then the challenger disaster happened and then the whole fleet was grounded for 
two years, right? One, two, almost two and a half years, actually. Uh, uh, until SDS 26. <coughs> and then they immediately started going with a, like a tight schedule again. And it kind of got back into, you know, regular flights in the mid 90s. Uh, the cool thing is when I zoom out, you can see the decades, 80s, 90s, 2000s. And then it finished in 2012. And of course, uh, in 2003, there was the Columbia disaster. And after the Columbia disaster, they um, they basically decided, oh yeah, one more thing that you can see in the, uh, does, is the stream fine? Is the stream working? Yeah, it looks like it is because the chat was uh, got disconnected or something. Um, yeah, the cool thing, what I wanted to say is, um, yeah, like you can see here which missions went to only space and which missions went to the space stations. Because here, uh, this the red thing is Mir. Uh, the red thing is Mir, and this is this was a, they had a bunch of Mir missions, and then there was also this is Hubble, so they launched Hubble and then they serviced it. Uh, how many? Four more times? No, there was actually five missions, I think, to deploy one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there was five missions to Hubble. Uh, yeah. And and then everything else is ISS. So ISS and ISS. Yeah. But you can see that after Columbia disaster, Columbia, this STS-107 was actually the last free-flying space shuttle mission, right? Uh, they never actually did any kind of just orbiting in space missions. Everything else was, since then, was docking to either ISS or Hubble. Right, there was only one Hubble mission. Oh, by the way, I noticed that this happens in, uh, but only happens in dark reader mode. If I turn off dark reader, then it's it's good. It's good. It's hovering correctly. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, and like I really like this a little bit of overview of how did space shuttles, space shuttle missions go, uh, and you can see the the length of, and everything. But yeah, I'm thinking of extending it to past since uh, Yuri Gagarin's flight and filling up this gap, right? There is also Skylab somewhere here and there are Salyut missions. There are Salyuts. There is actually a Sal Salyut 7 is overlapping with Mir as well, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and yeah, there was actually a time when Mir and ISS were overlapping uh, two years before they deorbited Mir. Uh, yeah, and I actually found out today, I didn't look into this timeline so much. I realized that ISS was launched, the first the first module, Zarya, was launched uh, in uh, November. And we immediately had a space shuttle mission in December, like, you know, just like two weeks, two weeks later, basically. Uh, yeah, oh, maybe I should highlight weeks you know, I, I just had an idea because I don't see what what time of week it is. Oh, yeah. And I remember how, how long it took me to actually make this uh, like day day uh, viewer. Uh, yeah, like uh, so that it's so smooth, like and it's also like, you know, you see the date here and then it, like disappears when it comes to the edge. Whoa. It was so cool when I actually finally managed to do it. But I did it all by hand. I didn't do any. I didn't use any libraries for that, right? It was just, it was just me and maths and you know calculating stuff and and this thing as well. Yeah, and by the way, this is this is all done with SVG, so this is all SVG text and this is not DOMS actually. Uh, this is just the test, the test text, and and this one shows the current time where I'm hovering over. And you can go back to, you know, the 15th century if you want. You can go back to the birth of Christ. What happens actually? Oh, oh, it ends. It's broken. Wait a minute. It, it, so it, there's no below thousand. What? What? 
It's like 990. I never actually went this far. <coughs> so beyond a thousand, it's it just broke. It just breaks. It does create text, but it's broken. <laughs> funny, so funny. Uh, Anton Kudin, hello. Yup, I don't know what what you meant by yup. That was a long time ago. I didn't notice it. Okay, yeah, so uh, I don't know why. Yeah, probably because of the time that I'm using. Uh, basically, I'm using the uh, TypeScript's date time, or I guess that's JavaScript's. Okay, let's go back. I need to have like a zoom in, zoom back in. And how far can I go into the future, actually? I wonder. Maybe this is going to be uh, maintained by my descendants. Okay, I can definitely go up to the 3,000 years. <laughs> yeah, and I and I can't hide this window. This window is a bit wonky. Uh, I'm probably going to add some a window that is not SVG, you know, because this is also an SVG window, and it's kind of clunky. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, I can definitely go up to 4,000 years. Yeah, and it keeps on going. So, uh, and yeah, I noticed that also. And I, can I actually zoom in to individual days? Oh my God, I can. Cool. But yeah, here's the thing. The thing is that uh, when I actually zoom in too far, too far in, uh, the, the SVG starts falling apart at some point. Like, ah. Uh, Actually, it's pretty. It's working pretty well now, but sometimes it starts glitching. <coughs> yeah, for example, if I go to today, so yeah, right now it all the timeline always ends with today, right? This is today. Uh, and oh, it's November. Is it? Oh well, it's November here. Oh, first of November. Well, uh, you know, happy happy new month, everybody from from Europe uh, but this is UTC time so it's not yet it's not yet yet November 1st in UTC uh, okay so anyway yeah you can see that when I start like zooming in it's kind of falling apart so I don't know this is probably like precision of SVG elements or something uh, but yeah anyway it is a uh, happy new month yeah uh, yeah Nice, nice timeline. Anyway, uh, yeah, I am going to like, yeah, I mean, this is like one of my 20 projects as well. So at some point, I'm going to continue, continue working on it. Uh, maybe I can, okay, I am interested in Skylab, actually. When did Skylab fly? So it was uh, 73 until 73 until re-entry until 17, 79. Whoa, it was actually six years, 50 years ago. Oh my God, it's exactly 50 years ago. I mean, not exactly, it's May 14th, but yeah, cool. I didn't know it was up in, for six years. I, I thought it was like two years or something. Uh, yeah, okay, let me quickly just add it, add it into my data, and then I'm going to continue working on, on my on my actual game that I'm supposed to work on. Uh, so yeah, I have this new flights JSON. Let me just copy, copy Vostok 2. I'm going to add, um, well, I should put the new open bracket, close bracket, Okay, let's do Skylab. Mm, craft, I mean, it's Skylab. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, to, yeah, I can actually remove this because it's not, it's not important right now. Uh, launch, May 14th, UTC. 
Damn, why it's why is it? Yeah, okay. This is the time, and it has a new line <laughs> inside the time of the launch, and then the re-entry. Well, it doesn't have landing, so maybe I should actually have re-entry time instead of landing. Yeah, and then site. Where did it the orbit? It doesn't say position of the orbit. Launch pad. Okay, let's add this. Let's say site is yeah. K I'm gonna I'm gonna put KSC for short. <coughs> okay, so let's see. Uh members, no members. No members, country US. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it will appear on my timeline. There it is, but it's red. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay, and it's also unclickable. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> cool. Okay, yeah, you can see how Mir outlived basically more than two times. And ISS is has really a long record. Look at that. Oh my god, and I just realized that ISS have lived, has lived more like has outlived the shuttle two times i mean when it started flying right because it feels to me like this shuttle it's crazy how long iss has been up without the shuttle uh because when i think about iss i also think about the shuttle kind of because the shuttle built it yeah anyway anyway yeah add its skylab i should add the colors as well uh and yeah, I don't know if the colors should be automated, automated or something. Uh, but yeah, there it is. There it is. I should also be able to modify the height of it. Yeah. So, and this line is a bit annoying <laughs> for launch. So I'm going to think about it and improve it for some other time. But yeah, the code base right now is pretty chaotic. So I want to improve it. I want to definitely improve it and actually completely remove the tab separated values. <coughs> you can see that I do a lot of things by hand because everything is like, everything was just like a prototype. So just working on it, refactoring it, everything. Uh, yeah. Uh, add single flight. Oh yeah, this is the new, this is the new system where I can add a single flight in this case. Yeah, it's always red, as you can see. So if I would change this color to something else, 4-4, uh, four, four, right? Oh, I would have a black. <laughs> That's too dark. Uh, let's do actually something lighter. There should be a way to do color picking, I think. in VS Code. I wonder if there is an extension for it. <coughs> I know it's possible in in CSS. Uh, I know that CSS has color picker. Such as CSS color notation. Uh, but does it actually work in other files? That is what I'm wondering. Again, for web developers, for CSS. Is there something that works for all code? Okay. A symbol color picker. There is one. This one has one and a half million users. Let's try installing this one. <clears throat>
Ah, there it is. Yeah, cool. Okay, this one works for, with all files. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, now I can actually select a different color. Yeah, let's go with something a lighter, a lighter red. Oh, it doesn't automatically save. Yeah, of course. <coughs> okay, still not readable, but okay. Uh, the first work on all first image show command, and you place landing pad, not launch pad in the data. The first work. What? The first work on all first image show command. I'm confused about the sentence. Please rephrase it. The first work on all first image show command. <laughs> and you place landing pad, not launch pad in the data. Landing pad. Yeah, but yeah, extending extending the history of space flight with SpaceX stuff, that's going to be complicated. <laughs> well, the thing is that the Dragon also is uh, reusable, so I am I'm planning to add I, I added it as well here somewhere here, right? It started in like 2016, so it's it starts from here and going into the future. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to show off a little project. That I have with the timeline and yeah once I have something usable and nice I'm gonna put it up and you can you can try it as well you can load it as well up and uh, yeah and look at this this is also overlapping this is Hubble but over Hubble it's STS <laughs> yeah STS 31 that launched Hubble so I need to somehow show that you know, not overlap, not overlap the, the, the things. I was thinking of just maybe showing on hover, like showing the, 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 a, uh, yeah. But the thing is that hovering doesn't work with mo phones. So I'm going to have to do, this also doesn't work with phones because uh, what I'm doing here is I'm simply scrolling. This is a scroll event. So it doesn't even use touch input or anything. <laughs> uh, on the phone you can actually move it you can actually pan it left and right but you can't zoom in <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna have to add in pinch controls and stuff like that there's probably ways how to do it somehow automatically there's you know there's magic in front end but I, I just don't know it so yeah it is a little bit complicated because I'm not a front end developer and uh, yeah just figuring out how to do things <coughs> takes time and yeah for example for example when loading um, um, there's a thing with like loading um, JSON from a file right I have this flight JSON and I want to load it and what I do is I simply do come here and I have where is my uh, yeah, this is this is how I load it. Okay, this is how I load it. Uh, let me find it. Where do I unpack? These are the colors for the shuttles, by the way. Uh, SVG elements. Where's the loading? Oh, there it is. Unload S. Uh, yeah, there it is. Get file. Get file dot read, and then I pass this on. And what this unread is, I I basically made it myself because I couldn't find a better way. Right? You know, I I needed something loading files quickly, and so I just implemented with a simple XML HTTP request. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh. This is how you would program in the 90s basically you know uh, just HTTP, HTTP requests but the thing is that I found out that in TypeScript there is a way to do it by saying like include and something 
include and then you do include a file and then you do something else i don't know and then you have automatic uh like typescript basically uh intellisense and everything but then i i save and it completely messes up compilation it creates completely new folders like like what the fuck just because i added this import thing uh it suddenly it suddenly fucked up everything and i don't understand it and it anymore and yeah because it's like it's there's so much magic in front end and there's also so many different versions of everything that it's difficult to navigate through but yeah like http requests just work fine and on the end of the day a lot of things that you would use in front end front end developer is just like a wrapper around those simple javascript functions like http requests anyway so uh it's just like sugar on top there's so much sugar on top. And and in the end, I realized, you know what? I don't need it. The same with SVG. Like, uh, there is this thing with, like, you can you can do, like, SVG stuff. But then it's, uh, like, wait, why don't I just create SVG things by hand? <laughs> and it turns out to be easier. I just realized that I have this SVG thing. I don't know if I'm actually using it or not. And there are some polyfills as well. Uh, I can't remember if I'm actually using it or not. Well, who knows? Uh, maybe, maybe I am, but it's in, uh, yeah, it is in TypeScript. But yeah, most of the time I'm just using raw, raw uh, JavaScript functions at the end of the day. Anyway, let's go back to the game. Uh, it's enough of this. Okay. Hmm. Do you want to save changes? I don't know. What did I actually change? <laughs> Fuck. Okay, let's see. Oh, I was just playing around with this. Yeah, I didn't actually make any changes. Okay. <coughs> so yeah, that's my little timeline project. Thank you for listening for for almost um, uh, an hour. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, showed it off. Cool. So I'm gonna implement. Let's start. Let's start with the with the TVs. Okay. I wanted to add a power button. So let me just add a little button. In this case, yeah, I can actually do a switch. I can just do a switch. Uh, oh no, I can use a. I can do a button with. Uh, I can do the button, simple button. Which one is it? No, this is a this is a test. This is the test button. <coughs> no, it's actually this one that I want. Yeah, I don't know why, but in Godot, in Godot, this gets localized for some reason you can see with this return key and i don't know why whenever you add something into this scene where the, the whether you dragged it into the scene or or you put it like this this gets localized and then you have to do this every time because if you don't click on this thing you will fuck yourself up you will shoot yourself on the foot when you copy a an object just a little quirk of Godot that I absolutely hate. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's let's do this. And uh, does it actually work? Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna put it here. And uh, I don't know. Oh, it's it's gigantic. <laughs> it's really big. Uh, let's yeah. Let me let me make it a little. Should I make it a little smaller? Maybe. Okay. So this is gonna be my <coughs> switch on button. And here is the thing. I actually completely forgot that I have this label that I can set to anything I want. Uh, 
and the label is not actually hooked to anything. Yes. So yeah, I, I, I made this so that I can automatically change the text of uh, of labels. But yeah, let's let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna go put some tea on. Okay, while well, while well, Visual Studio is starting. <coughs> Let's start limb space. And once we get the socks, because it's getting getting cold. Okay, line endings, classic. Line endings, yes. Don't you love? Don't you love this dialogue? Um, okay, so yes, this is where we ended yesterday uh, with this uh, buffer. Oh, there is the bear. Put the bear, nice. Um, yeah, and uh, what did I actually want to do? What did I want to do? I forgot. I wanted to add uh, yeah let's see let's see what's going on with the button and uh, why does it why doesn't it work B interaction button okay yes um, button 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 mm, label I have the label but I don't have a connection to <coughs> to the label where is it uh, so when I actually start a ah, label node get first child ah there is an actually uh, an overload which should actually give me a deep oh no it's not a deep I thought it was a I had actually a deep uh, finding algorithm uh, label node yeah this is going to be actually only the child only the first child so let's see let's see maybe I do have get child get first child uh, immediate child get children nested okay this one goes through the nested but yeah you know what let's actually add a deep deeper version as well so I'm gonna do a get first child uh, with uh, did I call it deep or nested okay I called it nested here so let's be consistent with this naming scheme uh, let's do uh, let's do nested which one which version of this one is using uh -huh, okay nested is let's go with yeah false get first child and i'm going to remove this immediate thing because it's no longer immediate uh so yeah if 
for each child, right? Oh yeah, but I need to make sure that I don't go deeper for every child. That's the problem. That's the problem. Okay, so for now, I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna do this. Uh, so I'm just gonna. So yeah, this shouldn't be. Bre this shouldn't be depth first, right? This should be breadth first. It should first go into immediate children through immediate children, and then go into the deeper children. Uh, but right now, I am actually just going deep first. So yeah. I should, uh, yeah, if I want to go bread first, I would need to have a, uh, a list, right? Which I, yeah, which I, which I can actually avoid having. Uh, so yeah, let me just go, go deep. Uh, child, no, get child, no, okay. So get child or no. Oh yeah, it automatically gets, ah, yeah, one more thing is that this should be a get child yeah not with casting okay so i'm just gonna do this um uh, get child and i'm just gonna go it do it with uh mm, yeah just this child and then I'm just gonna cast, I'm gonna say if child is uh, whatever type you want me to be, and uh, if child is child t, let's call it child t, then I'm gonna return child t. But if not, else I'm going to go deeper. So I'm gonna, <coughs> I'm just going to say else if uh, child. Oh yeah, as, else if nested, then get first child t, and yeah, and this is going to be the child. Oh yeah, and I, and I want to say nested again, right? Or not? No, I don't want to say nested. <coughs> or or yes. I should yes. I have the same thing somewhere. Get first parent. Include self. Right. I also have the include self thing. Okay. Hopefully this doesn't make an infinite loop. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, yeah. And this should actually be return. Else return. <coughs> So yeah, if if it doesn't find anything, it's just going to continue, right? So if when the for loop ends, it's just going to be return null at the end. Okay, so hopefully this is going to be perfect. Um, this is going to be, then I can say nested true. And that should be it, right? It should now change the label of this one. So uh, label um, here. The thing is that if nothing is on, maybe I should remove. Maybe I should not have. Yeah, yeah. Let's just do nothing. Let's just do nothing. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. Let's see how this works. Let's see if this even works. Uh, I'm gonna get the T.
Fuck. Dropped a little tea on the chair. Uh, it's it's tea anyway. It's no damage done. Okay, so let's see. Cool. It doesn't have any title, which means that it works. <laughs> Almost. Okay, so now I can click on it. Cool, it works. Uh, good, but it does nothing. As it says, as the output says down here. It says, button press, but does nothing. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> So, button pressed but does nothing. Let us let us do something. Uh, <clears throat> okay, first off, maybe I should. Is there like an emoji or something uh, for turning on and off? How do I? Yeah, but this font doesn't doesn't accept it anyway. Uh, CRT CRT knob. What was the name of it? What's the name of it again? Uh, where is the CRT? Oh yeah, well, I need to go to the CRT. And then I put label, I'm gonna say IO. No, <coughs> is it like this? What's the, what's the label? <coughs> On off uh, symbol or power symbol power symbol circle circle means power off yeah this one does it exist as a symbol power off symbol power symbol I wrote it to rocket switch, a rocket switch. Uh, power on, one zero. Symbols are used to indicate positions of the rocket switch. Uh, aha, there is this, but it's an SVG. <coughs> and it is kind of a standard. <coughs> Circle. Yeah, maybe I should go with a circle, you know, into a fully powered state. Interesting. I never actually read about this before, but it's interesting. Indicating sleep mode uh, as a replacement for the standby symbol. Okay. Uh, this was supposed to be like a standby and this is supposed to be power. Oh my God. Yeah, this is a terrible symbol. <laughs> I've, I don't think I've ever seen this, it's by the way. But yeah. The moon is definitely less ambiguous uh, in popular culture. Yeah, right. Anyway, uh, let's go with uh, let's go with just O. Okay, let's see. Let's see if this is gonna work. Oh, well, <clears throat> it's not really a round O, as I was as I was imagining. <laughs> it's way too tiny. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> but okay, for now. Okay, and this is going to be a toggle. So let's go to uh, let's make it toggle. Okay. And uh, yeah, and I have to call my CRT. Uh, where is the CRT screen? There it is. It uses the CRT. Okay, let's let's do that. And the args are going to be power. Let's just call it power. Okay, so what is going to happen is that the button is going to send a signal and it's going to say to the uh, changed state, um, and it's going to send it to this one. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I'm going to implement the interface. 
and this is going to be if args equals power turn it off so how do I turn it off well I can actually take yeah let's actually take the material and I'm gonna take it and say mm, I can actually take it with a with a property like this get or clone material yeah I can put it here something like that okay right does it actually return the material it should yeah it should actually return this this material okay so uh, capital material is going to be um, emission emission enabled is uh, state so if it is true turn on turn it on if not turn it off uh, let's see so I did uh, I did actually change it so let's see uh, this is hooked up saved I did say I'm going to look into signals <laughs> but I'm kind of still using interfaces <clears throat> okay so turn it on turn it off there it is it works turn it on off on off on off well it is it does look completely instant right now and by the way that means that also I should turn it off yeah this is actually showing on the other TVs that shouldn't oh yeah by the way and this should be in on state at the start so yeah let's just keep it let's just keep it on at the beginning hmm yeah it would actually be cool to not have to not have to reference them deep deeply this is always a problem issue with uh, in Godot that I need to have them open like this to be able to reference them CRT yeah I'm just gonna keep it like this I guess So yeah, let's actually keep it in the um, the switch should be powered at the beginning. So okay, so I don't have it actually is on is not is not exposed. Uh, let's see. How did I not expose it? Oh yeah, is on is actually not exposed. Interesting. Okay, I am going to expose it. <coughs> and um, so yeah, in the beginning, if is on. 
I need to push it into the pushed position, right? But this are only uh, this is only going to work if it's toggled. So yeah, it shouldn't work. It shouldn't work if it's not on. It if it's not toggled. <coughs> Yeah, let me actually add a little warning. If is on, if toggle, right? If not toggle, I'm gonna do a little error. And I'm gonna say CRT is, oh, CRT, not the CRT, button is on, but it's not a toggle. Is on is true on start okay and else um, I need to set the position so the position is going to be it is going to be toggled on as well <coughs> sorry about that mm, and uh, set button target right uh, this is where I'm actually putting the tween yeah I'm actually going to put the position to this which is going to be in my case in my case set button target This is actually not a great, uh, great name. I'm going to call it uh, Move Graphics. <laughs> move Graphics, I mean. Two. Okay, and then, but I'm going to add a, a move graphics immediate as well. And this one is going to just set the position immediately to new vector 3, 0, distance 0. Okay, there it is. So, in this immediate mode, this is what I'm going to do at the start. Uh, so it's going to be set at distance pressed. No, not pressed, but uh, is it depressed? <coughs> No. Wait, which one is it? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Wait. <laughs> yeah, it is zero when it's completely unpressed. When it's unpressed, but depressed means that it's in the state. Yeah, it's, it's in the pressed state. The button is depressed. <laughs> okay, so hopefully this is it. I'm going to make it on by default. <clears throat> okay. So, uh is it is it depressed? No, it's not. Why is it not? Oh, because I didn't set is on. Okay, there it is. There it is. Okay, I just realized that I want to add, I want to do something. So as Anton mentioned earlier, there it is. Now it works. Now it was actually pressed and now I turned it off. <clears throat> As Anton mentioned, 
uh, like, you know, if you want to like plug in other stuff, I need to actually separate the feed from the CRTs because you could have multiple feeds going into different CRTs, right? Like the display of the same, like basically when you, when you have like two monitors, you can copy, you can copy the output, right? This is what I mean by feed. There's one feed, but two duplicates. And in my case right now, I only have one feed and that is, that is this, right? This is my feed. Um, I have this sub viewport uh, that has the camera and is showing the 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 output the, the the view. There it is. This one. This one with the text. This is the, the initial. Okay. And uh, and yeah, basically, what is this node for? Oh, this is the command line. Okay. So it is referencing the terminal, right? Hmm. Yeah, so if I want to have multiple feeds, I'm going to have to turn this into like a, a feed class or something so that I can have correct outputs. But yeah, I'm going to think about that later when I, when I need to actually have multiple computers right now there's going to be only one okay so let's say that i've added power button uh limit the brightness of the knob oh yeah i wanted to actually set as i said that the brightness should not be zero uh it should be some some value so instead of that i'm going to say emission multiplier is going to be <coughs> oh by the way what is the default emission uh, emission multiplier? Not emission multiplier. Uh, I need to check which one is the default. Uh, CRT screen material enabled. Oh, it is one. How is it? How is it then? Why does it get hmm, strange? Because when I touch the knob, it changes. And I'm not sure why. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, what is the actual knob value? No. Uh, CRT. Oh, did I just shut down the main accidentally? Uh, okay. So the knob switch is, what is it? 0 to 360. But the value is actually 20, right? This is the max value. So there you go. It should be one to start with. And I don't know why it's not. I'm not exactly sure why it's not. Hey, hey, oh, Dark Rosen. Yeah, so what is going on here? I scroll down, you see, and it gets brighter. It gets a lot brighter. There's something weird going on here. Okay, can I actually inspect my CRT? Let's see what the material is like. Emission, emission says one, right? Multiplier is one. Let's go down. Does it change? Does it change? No. Okay, so maybe, maybe it doesn't update. This is definitely CRT one, right? I think so. Okay, maybe it doesn't update here in the in the remote panel. Too bad. Okay, let me actually output this. C 
So let's see before GD print. So let's see what's going to say. I've recently started programming Udo and I have released an arcade style of game to test how it works. Cool. Uh, so how was it? Uh, <clears throat> and what kind of game was it? Was it 2D or 3D? Did you make your 3D assets? Anyway, the thought of exporting from Blender was a good option, but I guess there are other ways too. Yes, I made all the assets myself. And... Uh, <coughs> And I, I, I'm not a big fan of the asset import of Godot. Uh, it just has too many quirks. Um, yeah, okay, let's see. Let's see, what does it say? 0, 5. What, why was it 0, 5 at the beginning? Interesting. Interesting. It's actually 0, 5. The intensity at the very beginning. How is it possible? Because this says that it's actually one. Do I ever change the uh, emission some somewhere outside? I don't think I do. Emission energy multiplier. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. Starting starting emission. Okay, I'm going to do ready. All right, ready. Okay, and I'm just going to capture the initial emission so material starting emission is material emission emission energy multiplier right yeah <coughs> okay and that's going to be then the start so I'm going to just use this and I'm going to lerp from from 0 to 1, right? By weight. But actually, I'm going to make something tiny, but it's not going to be 1, it's going to be starting emission. So, okay, let's go with 0, 0, 005. So, yeah. Something like this. <coughs> uh Wow, the detail of 30, 3 assets you were using is quite impressive. A lot of this is like... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, one part I'm using Material Maker to make the... Oh, I just realized that this is not pixelated. <laughs> I should pixelate it. But yeah, I use Material Maker. Uh, for procedural textures, so all these made in Material Maker, and then hot te uh, texture, hot spotting, and then Blender for 3D. Um, Godot seems quite good. I move. I made a two clicker game. Enemies come from above, and you click to destroy them. I want to also try 3D game depth. Yes, but yeah, 3D is not there yet. I heard. All the best about 2D, to be honest. But yeah, I don't know. It is just the import process is is uh, weird. When you, yeah, when you have to load, when you have to reload, uh, re-import old meshes, and yeah, it's just weird. I, I I'm not even gonna go into it because I've been complaining on it on my previous streams already. 
many times. So uh, yeah, just watch my previous streams if you if you want to hear some rants. But there it is. Okay, so yeah, it actually it actually works now. Uh, the the brightness the brightness looks better than before. Okay, so yeah, and it doesn't go to zero. It has like some minimum, uh, which is good, which is good. Okay, and I can still type in, yeah. <coughs> cool, okay, that's one thing. Um, done, cool. Make a keyboard out of buttons. Yes, let's go with making a keyboard. Finally, finally something fun. Um, yeah, so uh, here is what I actually want to do. I want to make a few buttons. Okay, let's actually make a new scene. Let's make a new scene. Um, I might actually use one of those base base boxes. What is it? What is the name of it? Clutter box. Clutter box. Yeah, like this one, but with a hmm, maybe this one. Mm, no, that's not great. That's not a great shape. Um, yeah, this one, maybe. But I'm gonna override the material. I'm gonna use a different one. Um, maybe, or maybe I should use this one. I don't know. This is a 3D rigid body, which is a problem. <coughs> um, so yeah, let's not actually use this uh, this object, or maybe I should. <laughs> I'm just undecided. Okay, uh, maybe I should go with this. Should I have the keypad? No, let's not do, do the keypad as uh yeah let's just do static body for the beginning because this is going to be way too confusing i think for people to have a non-static body okay so i'm gonna do a mesh instance and for the mesh instance i'm gonna load this clutter box okay clutter box one no it's not clutter box one um quick load clutter clutter maybe it's just clutter no it's not okay it's actually the third one uh clutter clutter box two yeah it is this one <coughs> but i'm gonna make it uh use a different i'm gonna make it use the plane plane panels plane this one yeah good uh it's like a minecraft box now Okay, so we have that, and I'm gonna add a few buttons. Uh, so this is gonna be button, 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 button. Uh, test button, yeah, this is gonna be this button. Oh, and I didn't even add a... Okay, hmm. I need to resize this every time. It's annoying. No, oh, I wanted to do this. Okay, and I'm gonna put it over here. And actually there's another dimension that I forgot about. All right, and now I'm going to put these buttons on top. Okay, and here is the scheme that I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to have a like a keypad with four, four by four keypad. Uh, I think this is going to be a good amount of keys. So I have three. Oh wait, I forgot to do the, the most crucial thing. I forgot to, to revert this. Yeah, I just mentioned that if I don't do this, 
then it's everything is broken. Okay, so we're gonna have four keys. Uh, okay, there we go. And let me actually put them. No, that's actually good. I don't need to. Yeah, actually, I made them pretty well positioned. Surprisingly, surprisingly well positioned. Uh, let me actually just uh, put it in the middle. Mm, how do you do wireframe? Wireframe, wireframe, wireframe. Please, please, where is wireframe? There it is. <laughs> Took me a long time. Okay, yeah, I can see where the beginning is, where the middle is. Okay, it's over there. Cool. Okay, so now I have the four buttons. They are identical. Uh, and I'm going to do four more buttons, right? Let's go back to normal. All right, here we go. Cool. Let's actually put a child note. Uh, and I'm going to call it buttons. Oh, oh no. Yeah, it does. It, they do need to be parented to this. Damn it. Okay, well, for now, I'm just going to keep it like this and I'm going to make sure that they are in the middle. They're all in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Cool. So what are these buttons going to be? Well, it's going to be a keypad. And yeah then i can i can now resize the rest <coughs> uh yeah I, I can actually put all these buttons as a child of the static body and uh and yeah this thing is actually going to be smaller so something like this Okay, I don't know. Is it going to be this deep? Yeah, and now I need to rescale the collision. <laughs> Annoying. <coughs> anyway. Let me turn on the normal again. Mm, is there actually a scale which is not which is like where I can drag in here. Show list of selectable nodes. No, what is this? At position clicked. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I didn't know this exists. Weird. Okay, so you cannot actually scale by size. You need to scale it relative to the center every time. Hmm, okay. I guess I'm just going to move it manually. Okay, so here I have some keys on a sort of keypad. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I need to make sure that this collision shape also fits. Okay. So, uh, what are these buttons going to be? Well, I'm thinking 
So I'm going to have a keypad, definitely. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, should it be one, two, three, or wait, let me look at the Apollo one. Uh, ref, <coughs> pure ref. I'm not sure if it works for 3DSs though. Grid container. You can use a grid node for the buttons. Grid container. I don't think that's a 3D thing. It is a 3D thing. Grid map. Node for 3D tiled base maps. Uh, nah, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use it. Maybe some other time. Uh, anyway, let's load load recent. Okay, let's look at some re references. So this is what I based off my CRT on. Uh, this this one actually. <laughs> This is this was the main reference. In case you haven't watched the yesterday's stream, um, but yeah, what about keypad? So they actually start from the bottom: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so this is more on the phone. On the phone, it's like one, two, three from the top. And yeah, on a, on a keypad on the on the computer, it's from the bottom as well. So yeah, let's do something like this. So I know that they're gonna be okay. Let's let's replace them. So it's gonna be um, you know one two three. Oh, of course this one, four five six seven eight nine. Uh, and then I'm gonna have what is it? It's gonna be minus. There's gonna be a minus sign, there's going to be a zero sign, there's going to be a plus, right? And then I'm going to have four more buttons. One is going to be clear, clear the screen. Um, let's just put C. <coughs> one is going to be executed, execute. Uh, that one can be in the corner. Um, and uh, And then we have two more. One can be switching programs and another one. Which one should it be? It looks kind of like a microwave old TV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it does a bit. Man, I, you know what I hate about teas? They, they get too cold too soon. Okay, so this one, the Apollo one, has this key release, clear, noun, noun and verb. Uh, the space shuttle has ac, acknowledge, I guess, message reset, system, fault, GPC, uh, IO reset, item, aha, uh -huh. you can select an item, I guess. Execute ops spec. What's the difference between ops and spec? And pro, you have pro as well. And resume. Hmm. Maybe there's like a pause as well or something. Resume clear. Spec ops. What is exactly the difference in the spatial computer? Uh, space shuttle computer uh, I did google it before yeah pro spec ops item <coughs> primary computers primary computer system okay yeah it is actually this one yeah there it is this is the one this is the this is the real keypad this is the scheme uh, so what was what did they do what did the uh, item? This selects a specific function displayed on the CRT. For example, if the astronaut wishes to perform a faction, numbered 32, a fraction maybe, or fact, faction? Function, maybe it was function. 
32, he presses item 3 to exec. exec. Mm -hmm. It's like selecting an item. Ops, this plus a four digit number selects the operational sequence. Oh, so that's ops, operational sequence. And major ma modes desired by the crew, for instance, to choose the first major mode of the Aston Software Ops 1101 and Pro is entered. Uh, spec, this key plus appropriate digits and Pro selects a specialist faction, function, a faction, what the hell is faction? Or display function, and now it says function, screen. Uh, each ops be associated with it, a number of primary screens that reflect uh, what is happening in the software. The Ascent program has a vertical path for instance, um, additionally, special functions can be called from spec displays that are overlaid on the primary screens. On orbit and several ops have a GPC memory used to read and write to individual memory locations. Hmm. It cannot be called from either the ascent or descent of op ops operation sequences. Uh, display function screens are just that, used to show various data such as few cell levels, uh, but with no crew functions. To return to the primary screen, that was CRT before the spec or display, the resume key is used. Aha, this is what the resume is. To return to the primary screen. Okay, so obviously they have a lot of different modes of uh, screens, you know, that they can switch between. And... Uh, yeah, this is what they use the different, the different uh, commands from. Yeah, I guess I'm going to use something similar. Something similar, but I'm going to simplify it. So not have spec item hops, so many different ones. I'm going to have just two of them, right? I'm going to have P, maybe for program, and then item. Maybe I should have item. So clear program item execute, and that's kind of it, right? Uh, so that's, let's go with something like that. And I don't know if it should be on the side or in the middle, uh, or yeah, should I put it here and then put all the, all the other ones? Yeah, the minus and plus. Yeah, let's actually go with the shuttle shuttle based with uh, like this so it's going to be execute on the bottom right maybe or or should it be clear on the bottom so yeah what did i have i had clear program item <coughs> yeah something like this Something like that. Clear program item. But it's on the other side in the space shuttle. <laughs> Execute is on, actually on the top. Uh, yeah, let me put the execute here and then clear here. And you know, we can actually put this. Yeah, I don't know if this is a good side or should I use the other side? Uh, let's go with this. Let's go with this. So yeah, something like that. Or should I move it to their side? <laughs> let's do the other side after all. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna copy this to the other side. Oops. Like this. Okay. So here is our final final look of the keypad. So yeah, the execute is going to be on the top. Not sure about that one. But yeah. Okay, item program execute. <coughs> okay, so let's go. The first one is actually the execute button. Uh, so let's call it execute. 
uh, what is it called in here? Is it exec? Yes, it's just exec. Mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say exec. And then we have button one. No, this is actually button seven, right? Seven. This is button. Well, I don't see it. This is button eight. This is button nine. Okay, this is button. Uh, this is the program. <coughs> and then I have uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. So four, five, six. And then I have item. Oh, I should have actually put it like this. Okay. And then there's going to be item one, whoops, one, one, two, three, right? And then at the bottom, this is the bottom one, this is going to be clear. This is going to be uh, minus, this is going to be zero. And this is gonna be plus. Oh, and you know what I actually forgot? I forgot decimal. This is the decimal. <coughs> oh, damn it. Uh, yeah, how do I cl how do I click on the decimal? <laughs> I can't do an item then. If I put a decimal here, right? Uh, then should I even have plus? Maybe I should remove plus with the decimal. This is going to be the... De oh, it doesn't allow decimal. Okay, instead of plus. Yeah, because... Yeah, I wonder... I mean, you can click mi minus twice to get the plus. So, pff, I don't need... I don't need plus. Okay, so, yeah, we have exec. We have seven. We have eight. We have nine, we have pro. Um, oh yeah, oh, this is the label, right? So this is pro, this is four, this is five, this is six, item. One, two, three clear minus zero and decimal decimal is going to be dot okay so um yeah execute and yeah of course actually i need to have arguments set as well to the same thing because i'm going to pass that to the computer. <laughs> so I'm just going to duplicate all of them. Okay, hopefully that is it. <laughs> hopefully it's all. 9 Pro, everything looks the same. Yeah, everything looks the same. Good. Okay, uh, so I'm going to save this one. The static body. <coughs> or should I save this one as a keypad? Should the keypad actually relay information? To the computer maybe I should make it like that 
Yeah. Let's call this a keypad. Okay, which is going to be the static body. And then I'm going to have this keypad relay information. So yeah, let's actually save this as keypad prop. Okay, so let's add let's add it into my main my main thing. Okay, there it is. It's way too big probably. But no, I think this is this is good size. Okay, that's going to be part of the computer. And let's see if it is actually going to be usable. <coughs> okay, let me actually put it closer to the player, the whole thing. And of course, not this. Not this, but this. The parent. Another thing that pains me. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to actually put in a yeah, I'm going to make a keypad script just so that it can then work with the with, with the rest. Um, I'm going to make um, yeah, let's call it let's call the interaction a keypad. And is going to inherit a 3D node, node 3D. Okay, and then let's go here. And what I'm going to do it is I'm going to turn it into a um, switch change state. Keypad is going to be switch change state. But it is only going to simply relay the information to the next one. So it's going to communicate with some with some computer over here. So uh yeah, I'm going to need to have a computer class as class as well. Uh <coughs> So that um yeah, this is going to relay information. Let's just output the information here. Print uh, I'm going to say pressed uh, and this is going to be pressed key on keypad. Let's do args. Okay. And this is only going to work if, whoops, if state is true. Oh yeah, well, I can just do it is state, right? Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is that each button is actually going to reference. Okay, is this going to work? I wonder. Okay, if this works, then there's a chance for Godot. <laughs> so if I drag keypad, no, this is not going to work. Okay, there's no chance. <laughs> okay, I thought I'm going to be able to like just drag the keypad for each of them. Okay, well, obviously, Godot can't do that. So, oh, and it can't do this. Okay, uh, but can I quick, quick select it? What is, what is this? Paste? What is this? Set call on and 16 nodes. Okay. No, this is a clean, I think. Keypad. Okay. Okay, it does work. Okay, there is some there is a chance. For good though. So you can quick select a thing. I don't know why is it not showing that it's the same thing though. Okay. <coughs> but anyway. Okay, it should work now. So keypad. Keypad is here. Um, and let's have some kind of a keypad receiver here. So I'm going to do like a interface. Let's do a public node. 
Mm. Um, yeah, let's connect <coughs> exports. Uh, keypad receiver. Or should I do it? Uh, should I do signals? Maybe I should do signals instead. Now that I have this. <coughs> okay, but let's try. Let's see if if this works. So let's uh, let's uh, let's see if it's going to also change the label. And I'm gonna go and set new T. So, is it working? Oh my god, look at this. Look at this. It's showing, except that it's way too small. Okay, let's try it. I'm gonna press 69. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, it doesn't show anything. It should show. I don't know what's going on. Why is it not working? Okay, so obviously I'm pressing buttons, but it doesn't say anything. Mm, too bad. Okay, well, something is up here. Did I save it? Keypad. Well, they're all on keypad. Shit. Why is this not set to the default? God damn it. Okay, is it going to work? No, it's not going to work. Okay. Why is this not the default? By default. I just have to do it like this, right? And I can't even move down. Ah, oh, damn it. Yeah, I can't move down. I just have to click, 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 ah, click, 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 click. Okay. At least it wasn't a thousand things. Uh, let's see. What is the problem here, right? I'm calling keypad. So what the fuck? What the fuck? Why is it not calling keypad? Okay, let's just output this. Maybe the problem is in my logic. <coughs> yeah, obviously it doesn't work. Damn it. Damn it. Why doesn't it work? Okay, let's peek into the children. Keypad. It is referencing keypad. So why the hell? Why the hell is it not notifying the keypad? You know why? Because I didn't put the script. <laughs> Okay, no editable children anymore for you. Uh, I completely forgot to put the keypad on, the keypad script. <laughs> keypad script and keypad. Okay, let's try now. <coughs> yeah, this is the problem with 
referencing nodes and not actual components. There it is. Oh, and it and it shows both. So yes, I only want I only want this this thing. <coughs> Okay, so let's see. Press key on keypad. There it is. Pro item clear. Good. Execute. Juicy. I should actually impl improve the. Um... <laughs> the textures of the of the buttons a bit, and I mean they should the labels should be slightly bigger. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so yeah, but mm, yeah, the the thing is that I aligned I line I aligned them to be able to accept like two lines like this. Uh, but as, uh, let's actually resize them. Let's actually make them bigger. Um, transform, transform. Let's make it a little bigger. Yeah, can I actually modify the distance between two rows somehow line spacing there it is line spacing except it doesn't work <laughs> why doesn't it work oh you can force uppercase nice Mm. Oh, it does work, except it's so tiny that you can't even see it. Yeah, okay, there it is. Yeah, cool. Okay, good. So now it should be it should be bigger now. <coughs> the tea is already over. Okay, there it is. That looks better now. Uh, yeah, slightly, but mm, it could actually be even bigger. <coughs> could be even bigger. Okay, anyway. Now, I have to remember how do these signals work? And who should cook on who? Okay, let's try. Let's try to use a signal. Uh, let's see. Um, good old signal. C sharp signals. For needles. Okay. So, how does it work? In addition, go was access signal names. Await on a signal. Okay. 
Custom signals to C-sharp events. We clear our custom events, use the signal attribute, the name of the delegate needs to end with event handler. <clears throat> By the way, I should submit something to fork. Ah, this is the timeline. Let's do the timeline. Let's do limb space. Okay, so we have keypad. Key, uh, oh yeah, keypad initial added power and brightness to CRT, right? Did I do brightness yesterday? Yeah, added power button to CRT. Yeah, let's let's try this. Uh, okay, it's going to be event handler. And my signal is going to be keypad button pressed. Okay, let's see this. Uh, my signal with argument event handler is this done. Good, we'll create an appropriate events. <laughs> automatically behind the scenes. Okay, and then you can use set events as you would do for any other Godot signal. Know that events are named. Okay, so let's try to use this one. Okay, let's uh, let's just build a button. Okay, and then if we go back to main, let's see. So the keypad, there it is, keypad button pressed. So I can connect it to extra call arguments. Oh, you can add arguments. How does this work? Can you actually add an enum? No, you can't add an enum, unfortunately. So let's do an int. Okay. Oh, yeah, by the way, let's do a computer or something. What is this? This is the command line. Mm, yeah, let's, let's connect to the command line. So I'm going to do keep it button pressed connect int to the command line note which one is it it's actually this one right yeah uh, let's call this command line Oh, no, don't, oh, shit. Why is it opening a fucking Visual Studio every time? Okay, so let's see, edit. Can I actually add arguments? I'm gonna add an int argument. Uh, can I send one not like this? Okay, maybe this is a specific one. Oh, no, this is the number of argument, right? Argument zero. Connect, right? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Don't start new Visual Studios, please. Please don't, please don't. Can you? <laughs> I 
Can you set, can I unset the external 3D model editor directories? How can I make the text editor external, this one? Use external editor. Uh, executive flags, okay. Can I use on but not have one? Okay, let's try now. Connect. Please don't start it. Good, great, good. At least it failed. At least it failed to start. <coughs> oh, it has created a new, uh, a new item. So that is good. Okay, but let's not... What the fuck? Come on. Okay, uh, so command line... Yes. But why did it put on the end? Please go, don't, just don't do this, okay? Please just don't connect. It's trying to be smart, but actually it fails. So just not, don't put it in here. Okay, so I guess I need to have a... Sp okay, I, I, I don't think it actually gives me any benefit. <coughs> I, I think I'm just going to use interfaces in the future because... This doesn't make any, this doesn't give me any, signals don't give me any benefits that I don't already, that I'm not already doing. Extra arg. And now I'm going to do key. Okay, so how are we going to relay keys? Let's do, yeah, let's actually, I can do an enum. Public enum key and I can say uh, yeah I can't have one because it's not a number right uh, I need to do like a number two four so it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And we're going to have, uh, what are the others? It's going to be comma. Let's do zero in front. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have comma, we have exec, we have um, uh, pro, right? Item, and there's minus as well. Comma, minus, <coughs> and that's it, right? And that's 16, 16, 14. Okay, we're missing some. What, what am I missing? The following files are new as or disk. Uh, reload. Yeah. Wait. What am I actually missing? Uh, item clear. Clear and dot. Which is comma. So clear. Okay. So this is 15 now. Yes. That's 16, 16 buttons. Okay. And let's actually uh, map this. So switch for each args. Uh, yeah, I have to now map. <laughs> I need to map numbers. Oh, God. Now, <coughs> uh, yeah, I can do a pattern matching. I can do pattern matching. I can do um, key key is switch no, does it goes like does it go like args switch 
right? And now I can do like uh, uh, zero, it's zero, whoops, a zero. Does that work? No. What does it say? The switch express does not handle all possible values. Okay, so yes, we need uh, we need a error as well. Let's just go throw new exception wrong key. <coughs> Something like that. Okay, so we're gonna have all these numbers: one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, uh, and then we're gonna have this is all gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Uh, wait a minute, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six is missing. Six, whoops, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we're gonna have clear is gonna be key clear, uh, what is it, how do we, how do we call, call um, decimal is dot okay if dot then key decimal hmm. comma I call it just comma okay then we have minus is key minus and then we have exec is key exec pro pro is pro and we have item <coughs> key six is repeated twice okay yeah I don't know actually why I'm even even doing this <laughs> I could have actually just passed it by by string instead of this <laughs> I'm just introducing mistakes there there we go yeah, now I didn't change. Is that all? One, two, three, four, five, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. What am I doing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yes, that's all. Okay, and then, and then I'm gonna pass to the signal keypad button pressed event handler dot in. How does it work? But I need to pass it as a string, no? Can I do this? And then I pass it as a long, long key. Wait a minute. How do I even fire? How do I uh, fire a, a signal? <coughs> A mid signal. Okay, so there's actually a mid signal. Ah, a mid signal. And then I pass it this thing, yes.
and I pass the argument. Which in my case is gonna be long key. Nope. Is a type which is not valid in the given context. <coughs> I listed under the nested signal name class. Okay. So it actually has it actually creates a class on on li online. Uh interesting. Interesting. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, this is weird because you need to pass these uh, arguments. You need to pass the arguments in a weird way. Like, it, it, it's not type safe at all. You have to know what the arguments are. That is strange. That is strange right because the next time that i want to do like a keypad if i just have another keypad and i want to say connect to yeah you need to add your arguments yeah Oh, wait, you can actually pick as well. You don't have to create a new one. Interesting. Interesting. So that's also possible. And by the way, this is private. Okay, so what I'm going to do yeah, let's actually try to do this private void. Keep it pressed. Okay. So I have this uh, reload. Yeah, I'm definitely. Wait. Yeah, let me shut this down. Um, let's see. What does it say? Pick receiver method. Yeah, it doesn't have it doesn't have anything in here. Yeah, signals are just weird. I, I'm not a big fan of them. Okay, so let's see. Did it actually add something? Keep it pressed. There it is. Int key. So yeah, if you add this one, it still has the same argument, right? Or not? Okay, let's actually remove this one. Disconnect. Okay, and I'm gonna connect and I'm gonna say, let's reconnect to command line. I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna take this one. Yeah, and it doesn't actually build arguments for you. This sucks. You have to add your own arguments, damn it. Yeah, and good, it didn't start the, the... Okay, it did start here. What? Uh, why did it add a new argument now? I fucking hate this. Okay. Yeah, definitely there's work to do. Ah, look at that. <laughs> it, has, it has created a new method with another argument. Oh, Jesus. Let's no, I want to do I want to use this one.
It is that one, right? Let's see. Let's see if it works. Or is it this one? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm I'm ever going to use signals ever again. And it doesn't even work. <laughs> okay, so let's not use signals. Okay, signals are shit. Signals suck. Okay, let's just do a, you know, let's just have a normal thing that accepts an enum that I can, I can cast into, right? So now I can do keypad, keypad uh, key and I can receive the key directly through an interface, right? So instead of having the signal thing, I'm just gonna have a node here. And that node is going to be, yeah, let's call it, just call on. And yeah, let's do exports. <clears throat> and yeah, instead of emitting a signal, I'm just going to say um, call on. Well, I have to say if args. No, if call on. If call on is not null, call on dot uh, keypad, whatever it is. Oh yeah, I need to I need to cast it. I need to call. Okay, I'm just gonna make a little receiver. I'm gonna call this keypad pressed interface i keypad receiver, and I just do this, and this is gonna be a public interface, so it can be accessed by anybody with a colon and now I'm just gonna do a if colon is not null and call on is I keep at receiver keep at receiver and I'm just gonna do keep at receive up oh, whoops keep at receiver dot keep at pressed key there we go <coughs> And then the command line is going to be extending the I keypad receiver. And there we go. Uh, why doesn't it want to be, why is it not the same one? I don't know. Oh, because it needs to be keypad, it's the same one. It's the same signature, what's the problem? Maybe because it needs to be public. That's the issue. Yeah, that was the issue. Actually, it needs to be public. <coughs> okay, so here I'm just gonna do a switch <laughs> again. Now I'm gonna do it the opposite. Oh, shit. <laughs> and now I have to use cases. Well, yeah, okay. It's ugly, but I have to do it. Uh, so this is going to say terminal. Mm, no, wait, what is the name of it? Input buffer. Input buffer. Append. You know what? <coughs> Let's do a let's do a switch after all. A better switch. Switch. Mm, let's do a what is it? Where 
to append is going to be a key switch. Can I do a switch in that? No, key switch. Uh, okay, <laughs> I guess I need to to do this. So for A1, oh, it, it, they all need to be key. Key dot. Okay. So for key, this one. Oh, they, they need to be uh, keypad. Keypad dot key. There it is. For this is going to be zero. Yeah, I don't know why, why I actually did this. I mean, it's all going to be the same anyway. Mm, yeah, I, I, I went from, I converted from string into a key and then I'm doing this because I like, oh, well, it would be cool to be type safe. <laughs> yeah, no, let's, let's just simplify this because why did I, why did I, why the hell did I even do this? I'm just going to not do this instead. So here's another reason why C sharp doing everything in C sharp is cool. If I decide to change this, I can just change the signature and I can just say string key and that's it. And then everything else is needs to be changed. But I don't need to recompile and I don't need to change the signals in the editor. Uh, I can just simply say args here and that's it. Uh, and then I just remove everything. <laughs> and I'm going to remove the keys because uh, let's let's keep the keys, although they're OK. And then I need to change the signature as well. So I'm just going to be I'm just calling call string. And that's it. So this is going to change on us. Yeah. Uh, so basically. This is going to be a switch, but it's going to be a little bit of a different switch. This is going to switch on a key. But the the key is in this case. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, default. Yeah, this is going to be exec. Exec pro uh, item. Uh, what is what is the other things that we have? So comma is going to work <coughs> as normal. We have minus. Yeah, that's that's what we're not going to append. We're def we're definitely going to catch a minus. Uh, zero. Yeah, and comma. We definitely have to catch comma. Okay, we have to catch comma. We have to catch pro pro and clear, of course. So this is going to be clear. That's it. All right. I think that's it. OK, and everything else default is going to be like um, input buffer append, right? Input buffer now, yeah, intelligence is completely broken now <laughs> because I need to add cases here. Uh, so case, this is going to be this case. Um, OK, and I need to, of course, add the breaks everywhere. Mm, what does it say? What's the problem here? What's the problem? Oh, pro repeats. Okay, and default is going to be um, buffer. What's the name of it? Uh, input buffer. Okay, input buffer dot append. And I'm just going to append the key, right? <coughs> okay, so in case of a clear, I'm going to clear the buffer clear. OK, in case of a comma, I'm going to 
add a comma but I will have to sh make sure that there's no double commas uh, but for now let's just put a comma hello code space 25 for item oh yeah actually for item I'm gonna add item and pro I'm gonna add pro so this is gonna be executing so terminal um, yeah this is gonna be like if I press enter here so yeah let's actually add public void execute let's call it like this and that's gonna be this thing execute I'm gonna replace this <coughs> Yeah, and I'm actually going to hide this because we don't have that anymore. Uh, update, yeah, and definitely going to update after each keep it pressed. Uh, break, 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 execute. Yeah, for execute, we're going to execute. And for minus, we're going to make the yeah, we have to prepend the minus, <coughs> actually. But we have to make sure. Okay, well, let's let's just append minus for now, and handle it later. Mm, what's the problem? Oh, it needs to. The default needs to break as well. Yeah, there it is. And what's the problem here? Oh, no, I just that I removed something. Okay, let's try this. Let's see if it works. Well, I do need to attach a thing to the keypad. Uh, let's... Let's start this so that it compiles. Uh, interest. Oh, there it is. There it is. It, it finally compiled. Okay. So call on, I'm going to pass in a command line. There it is. <coughs> okay. Let's try. Let's try if it works. Ah, the key is already, already called. Okay. So there it is. It works. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, execute. Boom. Executed. Nice. Five, six, nine, execute. I can turn off the screen as well. Six, five, four, execute. Eight. Okay. One, five, nine, three, seven, eight, one. One five nine three seven nine one. Did I say three seven? Okay, wait. Seven eight seven. Well, clear. Yeah, there it is. Clear works as well. Seven eight nine. It is seven eight nine. Okay. Well, I, I guess I got confused. One two. Oh fuck. Uh, what about zero? What about minus? Okay, comma. Comma works as well. So let's do minus zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Execute. So minus zero point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. Everything works. Uh, pro is there. Item is there. That's it. I can clear. So I can do like pro 101, execute. There it is. It's like changing a program or something. And I can do like, uh, yeah, let's get closer actually. Uh, item five, execute, for example. Uh, by the way, multiple executions shouldn't move <laughs> if nothing is in it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's actually detect if there's anything so if input buffer 
uh, length is more than yeah is zero return <coughs> So yeah, just making sure that it doesn't. Okay, let's add this to fork and I'm gonna call the whole thing. I'm gonna call it keypad, keypad and working keypad now works with the command line. Cool, nice. Now we can do some nice things. Uh, there it is. Make keypad out of buttons. We did it. <coughs> cool. Nice. Okay, so let's add some programs. Finally, we can implement a computer. Uh, I am actually going to remove this direct input completely. So just so that we have it on Git anyway, if I ever need it. Execute ready. Updates, yeah. So, um, yeah, command line, command line. Yeah, we have to, I don't know. Should I make, uh, maybe the computer doesn't even need to be a node. It can be just a class, computer. <laughs> Let's just call it the computer. <coughs> So the computer, what is it going to be? Uh, we're going to be like execute command and is going to execute something like, uh, it's definitely going to have a reference to command line. I'm just going to kind of call it command or, or CL. I don't know. Uh, and we're going to do like a string. And let's start by executing a if stir is, let's call it program one. So program one, <coughs> what is it going to do is going to say command uh, you know what, I'm going to actually add a new thing. I'm going to say Yeah, let, uh, let's say outputs here. Output. <coughs> actually, well, this, uh, this should be like a right or something right line, right? Uh, right. Uh, printf. No, let's go with the uh, right line. Uh, because that's sort of the console right line. That's that's what the uh, that's what the C sharp default is. So I'm just going to do that. And what is this constrained execution shit? Uh, okay. Anyway, so yeah, right line is actually going to just output um, an update. So output and Q uh, and Q string, and then I'm going to update the view. That's basically what it's going to do. Uh, and yeah, then from command line, I can output, I can write line and I can say hello. <coughs> So program one is going to just say hello and that's it. That's the, sh that's the handshake that I was imagining, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm thinking, can I actually hang, hang the process for a bit or something? Execute command. Okay. So yeah, if this one does have a computer, so mm, computer, 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 let's make a computer. And for now, I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to create a new computer in the command line itself, which is a bit weird, but uh, 
Okay, so when I do execute, right, what I am going to do is that input buffer to string, right? That's going to be <coughs> that is going to be the command. Uh, let's do here. Command is input buffer to string. Oh yeah, and by the way, for everything else, yeah, well, uh, let's do command, right? Command, and then finally, at the end of everything, I'm just going to do computer, execute command, and I'm going to send it the command. Uh, so yeah, as we can he see here, uh, for the computer, right, uh, if it's pro1, uh, but for everything else, I'm going to say right line unknown unknown command. Okay. Basically that. Okay, well, let's see if it works. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to say uh, one execute and nothing happens uh i know what happened i know what happened i completely forgot i completely forgot command line no reference exception there it is i completely com forgot to put <laughs> computer dot command is this right i forgot to do that and by the way i think i can simplify can be simplified yeah I can just put it in the same line with open brackets yeah command is this yeah I, I forgot to pass the computer the command line reference to the command line yeah <coughs> okay so one execute Unknown command, my computer works. Okay, and let's try to do pro, pro, one, execute. Boom, hello, the computer says hello back. That's it, it works. The computer works. Cool, okay. Uh, so, uh, working computer but I have a little bit of a problem with the computer it's too it's too quick the computer let's just call it the computer the computer is a little bit too quick uh, so I want to actually hang and show that it's like working so how do I do this How do I do this? How can I hang? Oh. Is there is there a coroutine <laughs> in Godot? Yeah, the command line should actually wait for the next command, for the command to to uh, to finish. So I guess I need to have update as well then. Or should I use a wait? Uh, what is this? How does a wait, a wait work? <coughs> is there a 
Is there a is there a way to do C sharp coroutines in Odell or something? What is the C sharp equivalent? There are timer nodes. Timer nodes. They send the signal on timeout. But you so you need to like create a node. That is interesting. They send a signal. I I already don't like it. <laughs> I already don't like it. Uh, I don't know much. Uh, Gidel says it. You're right. System collections. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a dosy sharp uses async await to wait on timers, or wait x frames. Create timer. <coughs> okay, well, this is running in the update. But I wonder if I can avoid using the update. Yeah, well. Yeah, you can use async, I guess. Uh, scene tree timer. I don't have chat on the PC, so I have to just <laughs> Google it, what you write. Uh, one shot timer, a one shot timer. Okay, so uh, does it actually work in C-sharp? That's the question. It does. Await to signal. Okay, but it does actually still, oh my God, you need to hook into the signal, signal thing. Okay, but it still uses async, <laughs> async task. So, uh, yeah, this is basically the same thing. Okay, so what's the difference between using a sleep? That's my, that's my question. Okay, so let's do an await, I guess. Async, and this is going to be task, I guess. Um... So here, I'm gonna await. Don't you, can you not like just sleep, you know, like this? I can just do like a one second of sleep. Suspend the current, cannot await void. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I guess you can do this. <laughs> Let's try this. To signal. Ah, okay. <sighs> Does not exist in the current context. So you need to call it on the node. To signal. Signal a waiter to complete when the says, yeah. <coughs> I would need to pass it in the computer.
You can do one of timers without node, I think. Those dogs show it, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing, I think, that this. Yeah, message timer. Yeah. Okay, let's try this. I started to get sleepy, so I might actually go to sleep soon. Uh, just, just notifying you. Uh, yeah, let's try this with this timer. But I'm gonna have to pass it in. <coughs> so this is gonna be the what's the waiter object? Let's see. Execute command. Okay, to signal get tree create timer. Okay, I'm gonna have to I guess pass pass the tree in. That's what I that's what I need. Okay, so this is the node, right? Yeah. Let's ju just do the node. Yeah, I, I wanted to make this independent. But I, I guess I can't. I guess I can't. So instead of... Oh, and I need to call to signal on a... Yeah, this is way too complicated. I hate that it's like the two signal thing. This two signal, right? It's on the it's on the node. It's on the node. But why do you why is it asking for the root? Yeah, the problem with the weight is that this needs to be async then. <laughs> and then that propagates everywhere. Which is not the same as with... Uh... You know what? This is way too complicated for what I need. I just need to query the computer. Is it complete? Are you over? <laughs> so yeah, basically I need to run the clock of the computer. And I can do that in the in the normal updates. Maybe you can use normal async await and non nodes. Yeah, I mean, this is what I'm thinking, right? Uh, but can't you use like C sharp async timer, like uh, async time? Await, how to calculate? No, can you just await on time in C sharp? Task delay, there it is. It's actually a task delay. Test the weight. Task factor. Oh my god. Yeah, task delay. Wait for that. Mm. 
Yeah, just like a wait, a wait for task delay. But no, I don't actually want to do that. I just realized that I, I do want to actually check it every frame. So I'm just going to completely not do this. Uh, the problem is that if I have a lot of command lines, they're all going to have to check. <laughs> so, yeah, I do want an independent timer or something. Yeah, but the problem is that I don't, I don't want to return the execution to the command line. Yeah. How can I actually do this? <laughs> if I say command right line, it is what is it doing? It is updating. And this is not very safe because it is refreshing the terminal. Yeah, like my idea is that the command line is going to call computer and then the computer is going to be busy and it's going to call back. Yeah, but I would like to have. <coughs> yeah. It would actually be nice to do it in an update, like a processing update instead of at some arbitrary time. That's the problem. That's the main problem. So yeah, I can I should either have wait for a signal as I did, or I should just ask every frame. Yeah, this is the problem of like not having the computer be a node. <laughs> I should have the computer be a node. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm actually going to do, yeah, let's not do this. Let's not go with async. No, I'm just gonna have a, instead of execute command, oh shit, this actually complicates it. Uh, I'm just going to have a run rune. No, no, no runes. <coughs> I'm just going to have a run. Yeah, but the computer needs to be a state machine then so that I can I can check. And I can do, do busy. So like, if busy, I can do a timeout manually. <coughs> or something. Yeah. Well, yeah, not doing over async is also. Yeah, can I actually create a task from nor any any? Uh, I've actually never used async await, by the way, in C sharp, and I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of it, to be honest. Uh, task factory, start new. Let's see, uh, what is the task factory? So you can create a new action. Okay, let's start a task for the specify action delegate. Okay, and I can do a delay. 
Oh, this is maybe a, a, a good solution. Not maybe not the great task delay. Then I can wait for a second. Wait. Console right line done. Mm. Let's try to do this right line. Hello. Like this. So yeah, this doesn't need to be an async anymore. Right? It can still be a void. <coughs> What's the problem here? Oh, this is actually <laughs> two separate things. Yeah, of course, because this is like, it's almost like running, running a separate thread, right? Or maybe it is basically running a separate thread. Okay, let's actually try this. But I need, I do need to say that it is busy, right? Failed to build project. All right, <laughs> what am I doing here? I'm just gonna execute command and I'm not gonna have any nodes passed in. <coughs> okay, so let's see what happens. Execute nothing. Unknown command. Uh, let's do pro one. Let's see what happens. And nothing happened. <laughs> Native interrupt. This function in this node can only be accessed from either pff, I can't even see the whole message are you fucking kidding me copy error I have to copy the error so that I can put it in somewhere and then copy it here and then actually see it this that's how you do that's how you look at errors in Godot look at that uh, native function going to be sharp this function in this node terminal can only be accessed from either the main thread or a thread group. Use call deferred instead. Uh, yeah, so that's the problem. The problem is that I can't just call it from any thread. The task delay, task start new, creates a new thread. <coughs> so I need to actually have the right, I have to return into the right like uh, at the right point right so that is why I need some kind of a mechanism to actually query the computer and be like are you still running you know what let's just make it into node That's gonna make everything so so much easier. What's going on? Oh, I'm still running. I'm still running. Okay. Let's make a new script. 
computer computer it's just gonna be a normal normal node okay and now it's probably gonna say uh oh, you have a problem because it's the same yeah there it is it's like everything is broken yeah because i'm actually going to go into the computer into the computer okay and i'm gonna pass this one paste this one up mm, no i'm actually going to copy everything in like this so now instead of these tasks I can do the well I can do the signal await as I was doing um, yeah so now I can't just new a computer Or maybe I can. Maybe I can new it, but then I have to add it to the node. Uh, computer. Um, actually, I'm gonna do add add a child, and that's gonna be the computer. Yeah, there we go. So I'm actually making the computer at runtime. <coughs> and so on process, I can just check if this is going to work or not. But let's see. Let's see. Can I actually make a, uh, this kind of a, a wait to signal? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens if I do this. Mm -mm -mm. To signal, what does it say? What's the problem? Uh, the awaits can only be used in the async. So this is going to be an async. And avoid, I guess. Okay, let's not do run then. Let's not do any of these. <coughs> let's try this computer so execute command so it's an async but it's not complaining that's strange that's strange let's try to build it uh, nope I don't want to Oh, it is actually built. Interesting. Okay, let's see. Does it work? Unknown command. Yes, it does work. Uh, program one, execute. There it is. It has waited for one second. Good. So it does work. This is the simple way to how to how to make it work. I'm going to discard this. Uh, yeah, there we go. But it needs to be a node. Yeah. Unless I want to pass in a node. Well, okay. We'll, do, we'll just make it a node. Okay. So. Well, this is a, I, I don't like this. It's very verbose. Can I can I shorten it? I would love to be able to like not make it not make the computer a node, but uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, let's see. Um, a wait. Yeah, let's make this into like a seconds or something. Um, what does this actually return? Signal awaiter. Okay, I guess I'm going to return signal awaiter. Uh, 
and let's say seconds float seconds okay and I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna say return return and I'm gonna pass in seconds here there we go so now I can just say away seconds one okay that's it cool maybe you should give the computer a busy flag otherwise you could give inputs while it's still I know I was thinking about it I do already have busy for that reason for that very reason <coughs> And you know, I was also thinking I could add like a little, uh, you know, that <laughs> uh, like spinning, spinny bit that goes like this. You know, uh, <laughs> it's spinning around like this one character that spins around. <laughs> uh, oops, didn't see it up there. <coughs> Let's do this. Let's do the spinny character. Uh, put spinny, spinny. Let's just call it spinny. So how do I actually execute this? I don't. I'm going to have to do it from the command line. So let's do a command line. Yeah. But yeah, the problem is that the command line needs to be updated. Like I'm trying to prevent updates all this time. And then in the end, I'm just like... <laughs> I'm going to have to I am going to have to make it anyway. Keep it pressed. Yeah. So basically I need to do if computer busy return. That's that's the thing. Right? If computer is busy and then I need to make sure that at executing busy flag, bossy flag, busy flag is true. And at the end, it's going to be false. <coughs> but this is actually, yeah, yeah, it is actually going to process. I'm th I'm thinking who should who should show the spinny the command line okay let's just do the up uh, uh, let's just I'm trying to not do this but I'm gonna have to do it anyway um, update 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 how do you call it update uh, refresh no re um, repaint no ah uh, shit I keep forgetting I keep forgetting so yeah ready is the init but this thing is called what is it called process jesus i I'm, have to remember that okay so i'm gonna query is computer what is wrong with my o's and u's today computer busy okay if computer busy what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put terminal terminal put a character of busy <laughs> so where is actually the command line the the location of the command line aha uh -huh. terminal minus height well, minus one uh, input let's just call it input y
and input x is going to be one, right? So I'm just going to have input x and this is going to be input y like this. Well, it's complaining that it's not capitalized. <coughs> okay, and then I can do the busy at input x, input y, and this is going to be character that is going to spin around. But let's see if this works first. What? What? Oh, because it's an escape character. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so pro one. Let's see. Busy, nothing works. Cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, if computer busy put. Oh, it needs to refresh. It needs to update as well. Okay, it didn't show it again. Pro one. Oh, it doesn't doesn't do anything. Unknown no command. Pro one executes. No, there's nothing there. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Is this even processing? Let's add some, let's just output some things. Print busy. Pro one execute. Okay, so it is definitely being busy. It's just not showing the character for some reason. Uh, um, ah, it's because of the update. Pfft, it's clearing everything out. Yeah, I need to do update. Actually, I'm not going to update. I'm just going to terminal refresh. Because, yeah, it's not going to do anything. Except just refresh this one character. So execute one, uh, no, I meant pro, pro one. There it is, there's the character. Okay, let's do the spinny bit, the spinny thing. Uh, spinny, no, let's do like, uh, uh, so I'm gonna do a delta, right? I'm gonna increase, okay, let's do spinny time. Spin it time. 
plus equals delta as a float. And um, yeah, for each of the seconds, I'm going to make it show a different thing. So character spinny is going to be like switch. Hmm. Yeah, actually, it's going to be uh, spinny time floor. Uh, wait, no, it's going to be math floor to end spinny time, basically. And then I get a floor to end. <coughs> How many states is there? Okay, let me actually let me actually flip it. So spinny, there's going to be an integer of some sort by eight. I don't know if this is going to be and then I'm going to switch and I'm going to say, okay, if zero, if zero, it's going to be where do we start? I'm going to start from from up. So like from noon. Okay. And then if it's one, it's going to be uh, a slash like this, right? If it's, it's going to be hyphen. If it's this, it's going to be this thing, but it needs to be escaped. Uh, then we're going to have another vertical. And then we go back, right? We're going to go this way, hyphen. And then we're going to go this way, uh, no, the other way again. Mm, and finally, the upright, but it's the same as the first, so we're not going to do anything. Okay. <coughs> so what is going on here? Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yo, yeah, it is actually eight states. Nice. Nice. And then default is never going to happen. Just do space. Uh, so what does it say? Can I convert into char? No, it's not actually int. It's actually this. Ah, that's that's the problem. The, I needed the parenthesis. Okay, cool. So spinning time, as it increases, we can actually increase the, the speed here. Let's probably, I'm probably going to need to put it to like much faster. Okay, let's let's try this. Let's see if it works. <coughs> Basically repeats itself from four on, doesn't it? Does it? Up the 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 up the 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 it does. <laughs> Good catch. I wasn't even thinking about it. Yeah, I can just I can just do this. <laughs> okay, let's try it. Pro one execute. Oh, I'm not even using it. Spinning, so it's gonna be spinning. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. I was I didn't even see it. Bah. Okay, execute one. Oh, pfft, I turned off the screen. Uh, no, pro one, not execute one. There it is. It worked for a little bit. Okay, let's do operation two uh, of the co computer. Okay, operation two. Else if pro two. Okay, program two this is going to be else. Program two is going to be heavy, right? It's going to be like 10 seconds. It's going to be take forever. Uh, and I'm going to do a took forever. 
but but done. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. So let's try Pro 2 so that we can see the spinny work. Okay, Pro 2, execute, there it is, it's working, I cannot input anything else, and there it is, it took forever, but done, oh my god, it fits exactly into the screen, <coughs> oh no, that's actually not the edge of the screen, that's actually the, that's actually just a reflection, yeah. <laughs> That's actually just a weird reflection. Okay, anyway. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we can do, we can do commands now. Uh, pro one execute, hello. Pro two, execute, taking a long time. Nice, boom. Took forever, but done. There we go. We have really simple commands in the computer. Uh, so what did I say? What did I say? Okay, I can I can remove this stack trace. Um, changing programs. Well, changing programs. That's what I'm doing by pro. Uh, handshake checklist. Yeah, maybe I can have some kind of a checklist program. Um, uh, let's try something more uh, like sequence based. <coughs> Basically, repeat. Yeah, uh, let's do something that like lists. <coughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Item. I can use item to change pages or something. I'm, just, I'm thinking about like a, some kind of a page, page command. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I do need to clear command line needs to clear the the output yeah let's try just clearing the output that's going to be pro 3 <coughs> I just await one second and I'm gonna do clear can uh, yeah let's do a clear output hmm So output clear. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Just clear output. Let's see if that works. Maybe this, uh, if you care about typos right now, the output unknown command, uncone. Uncone command should be unknown command. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't see that. Uncone command. Mm. Yeah, I do care about typos. I just don't notice them sometimes. Um, okay, so program three. No, let's do like, yeah, unknown command. Program one, 
two hello uh, let's do program three execute and it does nothing <laughs> it does nothing because it didn't actually refresh yeah it just needs to refresh actually uh, that's the thing uh, so clear output needs to refresh yeah update okay so program three just clears okay um, maybe this would be a good thing to implement the double equals plus done this what double minus equals plus thing oh right double minus equals ah you meant <laughs> double minus equals plus that is such a weird thing to say uh, out loud uh, yeah, I know what you mean. You mean pressing twice the minus key should should negate. Yeah, actually, I could I could implement that because right now, right now minus just pressing minus means like just adds minus into the into the command line, right? <coughs> Let me just show you before I change it. Okay, uh, so yeah, if you press minus, it just adds it. So you can just say uh, minus, right? And it's just like adding uh, as if it's like hyphens. But it's just like, okay, I don't command this thing. Okay, so yes. Um, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so minus is actually going to prepend the input buffer with a minus. So mm, let's see. Input buffer. Can I actually do a zero? Yeah, I can. Insert, right? Yeah, I can insert. So I can basically say starts uh whoops can i do starts with i can't okay so i'm gonna i can just do like okay if input buffer uh length i need to check if it is more than zero right if it is more than zero then i'm gonna take the first one and okay let's Let's turn this into a scope. Okay. Oh, whoops. <coughs> uh, so yeah, if it is more than one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the first one into a minus but I have to flip it around right uh, otherwise if it's not I'm just going to append minus yeah so I need to just check here uh, if it is if input buffer zero is is minus already then minus no then nothing no there's no nothing character um should i actually replace it with a <coughs> well i can actually remove right if i say input buffer uh zero is hyphen then I can what well, is the remove at no there is a sub input buffer wait there is no like how do you even remove a character at a 
there is no way or maybe there is an overload no okay well i just i guess i'm gonna with another character okay well i'm gonna go with the string i guess and i'm gonna do a nothing can you do that or should i or should i do empty string <coughs> Okay, let's try this. Else, else, I'm gonna insert a hyphen. I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's it's actually going to be easier to. Oh yeah, of course, I need to put it here. Maybe it would be easier to actually start from nothing. Like there's gonna be space, kind of like, you know, if this is the input. Uh, you start with a space and then you put a number and then when you press minus you're simply like just adding minus here so it's like you know space or minus <coughs> I mean like this basically replacing replacing this first element but okay now that I've already made this Yeah. No, le le let's do that. Well, well, okay, let's see if this works. What does it say? Append represents use string builder band char instead. Okay, it's actually suggesting me to use a char. So how does it go? Char, 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 char. Uh, what was it? What was the thing that I was wanting, wanted to do? Oh yeah, minus, test minus. One, the uh, minus, there it is. It has added a minus and it has removed a minus. So there it is, it works. It already works. Clear, minus. <coughs> Yeah, what about pro? You know, if you say pro. No, yeah, let's keep it like this. Let's keep it like this. I don't want to I don't want to waste more time with it. Okay. And and another thing is comma, right? It shouldn't be possible to do multiple commas. Uh so What what is actually what what does it happen when you try to put multiple commas in the calculator? Does it actually overwrite? Night uh, nine comma nine comma nothing happens comma okay so it's just nothing happens okay and minus does nothing Yeah. Uh, so dot should actually if so if input buffer contains no there's no contains uh, is there like exists something like that or count No. So I have to I have to check it myself. Uh, okay, let's do a Okay, so if input buffer dot uh no no I'm gonna for for loop. No, I'm gonna for for each. 
I keep forgetting in C sharp now that there's for each. For a character in input buffer, if C is, what is this? Why? Why doesn't it work? For each statement cannot operate in variables at string builder because string builder does not contain an enumerator. Okay, interesting. Can you get a slice to it or something? <coughs> interesting that you can't, I, but I can't, I, but you can get a, an index, which is funny. So I can do like a input buffer, input buffer dot length. And then I can say input buffer that I, if input buffer is dot uh, return, right? Or break, break. Okay, so if it's not a dot, then I'm gonna append like this. <coughs> oh yeah, and then I'm gonna use char, not. Okay, there it is. Input buffer to string contains. I mean, yeah, but to string. To string is expensive. Better avoid it. I mean, expensive. This is such a small allocation anyway. That. Uh, yeah, anyway. One, two, three. Dot. 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 Oh, ah, 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 Doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. Okay. So what is the problem? What is the problem? Mm -hmm. For each input buffer, break. Ah, it breaks the for loop. <laughs> Not the case. Well, I could do a go to, but let's not do good go to found 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 comma. Let's do just that false. I'm just going to do found comma is true. And then if not found comma, there you go. <coughs> That's it, right? I've actually got the ex execute and everything. Okay, so na, 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 na. dot forty seven execute. Oh yeah, let's try let's try adding another one. There it is. It doesn't work anymore. You can't add multiple dots. There it is. Cool. And I can add toggle the minus. Cool. And I can clear. All right. Uh, so here is the thing. Let me actually fork this. Mm, computer as a computer as a node, a busy spinner and minus toggle <coughs> dot not important. Okay, so execute command, uh, let's see, checklist program. Yeah, I was thinking about the checklist program. 
I can clear. Let's do a checklist. <coughs> <coughs> as pro for yeah I can like uh, write a multiple lines or something let's do like a hatch hatch opening procedure hatch open procedure I actually have these written somewhere. I can actually try to just add it in the here. Uh, to do script, it's this one. Hatch undocking procedure. Okay, let's do this one. Uh, oh, yeah. The problem is that I don't know. Yeah, I need to be able to do wrapping text as well. Hmm. Yeah, that is a challenge. That's something that I should ask the terminal to do, actually. Not the uh, command line, maybe. Undock, undocking procedure. This is already too long, right? Let's try to do this. Uh, what? like uh, yeah I, I I'm going to have to implement wrapping <laughs> close and lock hatches on both sides this is already too much so there's like z uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twelve twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven this is the this is how much we can display on one screen so yeah this is gonna be uh, awful for the text yeah that's this is definitely not gonna be useful for for read for <laughs> for text Catches them both. Close and lock. Okay, let's do like this and just just test it. <coughs> if this is actually gonna be even useful. Fail to build. Oh, I can do a little uh, wait as well. Pro for execute. There it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, there's actually two more characters I can fit in. <laughs> yeah, this would be interesting to add. And then so here's the thing oh i'm actually only manipulating the position of the screen um this is the interesting thing right uh let's me just align the <laughs> this is cool this position wherever you want okay uh i can Wait, the input doesn't. Oh, the, because it's a right click. Unknown command. <coughs> yeah, there's actually one problem. Uh, yeah, I need to clear this the cl the screen. Uh, 
I need up and down arrows as well to go up and down. Uh, execute pro for execute. Yeah, it just adds all everything on top. Why is this actually not moving Q? Not moving the Q when you write line. Right line, right line, where is the right line? There it is. Output in Q. Ah, but I need to DQ when it's at the end. And Q, there it is. It's this one. In Q command, DQ. So instead of this thing, input buffer clear. Yeah, I'm going to do right line right line command okay and i'm going to move this thing <coughs> and this should be a more than So program four. Okay, let's do another one. Program four. Yeah, it is actually moving, right? Oh, unknown command. Uh, pro four. Yeah, it is moving the 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 everything. Cool. Okay, so here is the thing. <coughs> I'm actually going to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I am going to go in like 10 minutes. But first, but first, I want to do a little bit. Uh, so yeah, right line outputs everything, right, right line, buffer clear buffer clear yeah so what I wanted to do can I reference the terminal no it's actually private Can I hijack the terminal, please? Please. Okay, and I'm just gonna, instead of writing a line, I'm actually going to put, oh, well, no, that's not gonna work. Hmm. Because, yeah, it's not going to work because the, the terminal is outputting everything all the time. So I have to fake it. So, yeah, this is going to be like clear first. I'm going to clear output. Then it's going to do that thing. And... Uh, The thing is that I want to make the command line to paint something on the bottom of the command line. 
right? Which is impossible. Uh, I would need to write empty lines. Until the end. For like... Uh, whatever the terminal height is. Mm, I should also be able to query the number of public um, int. It's going to be the number of uh, number of lines, like visible visible output lines. <coughs> Something like this. And that is actually going to be terminal height minus one, basically. <coughs> so yeah, it's actually going to be um, the output Q is not available either. So four visible lines minus three. I'm gonna do right line. And then at the end, at the very end, I'm gonna write a line which is gonna be my like instructions. Item for Six change pages, something like that. <coughs> Let's try this. So, uh, pro for execute. Okay, there it is, except that one more is missing. But it, there it says item four, six, change pages. So, if I do item four now, I should be able to change the pages. <coughs> that is what I want. So, basically, it's like a program with sub commands, right? Uh, so here, finally, we're going to have to do some kind of enum, enum uh, active program. And I'm just going to give pro for mm, checklist, some of this none. And active program, active program. So they have the state. And uh, <coughs> yeah, so here we're going to have to be able to catch the item, the items as well. So, if 
else if item is whoops str is item four else if str equals item six okay so item four is going to be my like <laughs> well, the reason why I'm using four and six is because of errors right it's like four is a left arrow and six is a right arrow but yeah maybe this should be like page counts Yeah, I should I should design better <laughs> page page setting. Yeah, this is actually a single line. So it shouldn't allow return. Yeah, because they have a string, the output strings. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a little bit of a problem. I can do like a like a page class page which is going to have a string and that's it Pfft, it's just a string okay oh no it says it's actually going to be a list of strings <coughs> and that's going to be lines and this is going to use collections generic yeah so when i turn on the four this is going to be like a active program and now becomes checklist <coughs> and any other pro should actually destroy it so if stir starts with pro so when we switch the program this should actually make the active program active program to none <clears throat> so items should not change the active program so yeah here if active program is checklist i'm gonna change the next page uh maybe i can do like a, a book class book so it has multiple pages and that's going to be a list of pages so yeah at the beginning i'm going to have a book which is the like a checklist let's do like uh, I don't know undocking checklist and 
and then I'm gonna create a new one. And can I actually init it? No. Hmm, this needs to be public, that's why probably, right? Yeah. So, new list of pages. And that's going to be a new list of lines. <coughs> oh, I can't actually do this. I need to add. Can I? No, you can't have a, a, a new list by. I could have an array though. Oh no, there needs to be a new new page first. New page and then the page is gonna have a new line. <coughs> Is that it? Something like that. Okay, yeah, so it is actually totally possible. Am I forgetting some semicolons? Uh, what is going on here? This one. New lines. This one shouldn't be here. No, it should be. <laughs> what the hell? You can initialize a list like this, right? You can, yes. And it says like you can use new. So I could also use new like this. too many news. Uh, so what is going on here? Oh, this needs to be a comma. There it is. And then this needs to be a comma as well. And then this should be a semicolon. <laughs> there you go. Or, or no commas at all, because it's it's a one element anyway. <coughs> so yeah, you can actually initialize uh, okay, let me actually move this. But I'm thinking I can actually split in lines instead. I can just do this. Uh, yeah, I can also do multiple lines like this. Okay, let me implement this book and then I'm gonna go sleep. Uh, yeah, it is a bit ugly. But the thing is that if I have these lines, I don't need to do a list of pages anymore. Yeah, this can be, this can just be a line. That, yeah, I can actually create it 
on the fly. So I'm going to remove the page completely. Instead, this is just going to be a list of string pages. <coughs> this simplifies everything because now I can remove this, this, and this. So it is only pages is a new list of strings, which is just this. Yeah, and it does have at least one. Okay. Yeah, and this is not a, this is a list of strings. And I can also remove that. So yeah. Something like this. This is a bit ugly, but at least I can see how long it is. Okay, and then the second one might be like uh, what was what was the one I had? Extract air from the vestibule. Pfft. Close the valves immediately. Let's do something like this. Um, hmm. Okay, extract the air from the vest from the vestibule. <coughs> Set the vest x valve next to the port to the open position. There we go. <laughs> That's enough. Let's see if I can actually show the whole thing. Okay, so we have three pages. <coughs> and I'm gonna take a checklist book. Okay, so I'm just going to add into the book, I'm going to add show page. Uh, yeah, with the public, public void show page int i. Okay, so, <laughs> oh, this is a, <coughs> oh wait, this is not the class. This is initialization, damn it. Uh, this is the class. Okay. Public void show pages. So what show pages is going to do show page and I is it's going to do this, the thing that I've already done here. Mm, and that is going to be command. Oh, I can't reference the outside. An object reference is required. Let's pass in command line. Okay. And then I'm going to turn all the pages, right? I'm going to take pages, I, uh, page, page. Oh, this is just going to be the string. Uh, I can split it immediately. Pages. I split. That's going to be by a separator of n. Should be rn. <coughs> uh, okay and split splits 
well, I can do like pages, splits, and that's gonna be like, okay, for each split, for each line, in, yeah, yeah, I can actually call it lines, splits. Okay, that's gonna be lines, for each line, command right line, line, okay, there we go. There we go. And then finally, I'm gonna, yeah, I need to draw visible lines. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be Vula for each visible line. <coughs> I'm gonna write an empty line and then change the pages here. So yeah, show pages, uh, show page. Let's see. So for the beginning, I'm going to show page zero. Uh, let's see book. No, oh, checklists. What's the name of it? And okay, checklist. Let's call it the book. Book book is undocking checklist. <coughs> show page zero okay oh and I'm going to I have to pass in the CMD okay and then when I actually convert when I uh, when I set item You know what? I'm going to actually do pages individually. Let's do an else if stir starts with item. Okay. And I'm going to do, yeah, I should have done this one. If it's checklist, Let's convert this into an int. So I'm going to do a substring uh, starting with four, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. Um, that's going to be numster, the number string. And I can actually, well, I'm actually going to do it directly. So numster. This is going to be substring four. That's going to be, uh, well, yeah, I need to do int parse. Int try parse. Okay, let's do a try parse. If try parse, and I'm going to out, oh, I'm going to out int <coughs> number, page num. Okay, and I'm gonna output the book, right? I'm gonna say checklist, and I'm gonna checklist show page, page, page num with a CMD passed, passed in. Oh, and I'm not gonna write this line because that's automatically shown. <coughs> yeah, so if ah, I forgot to actually do this. Uh, I'm gonna go make another tea and then go to sleep. <laughs>
I need I need something smooth for the throat, you know. That's that's the thing. And something hot. Okay. So uh if it's a checklist, try parse substring for out int page now. What was I doing here? I'm showing a page, right? With the right page. But I need to check first if page num is more than zero, is more than equal zero, and page num is less than, yeah, let's do a book first here. Undocking checklist. I'm gonna just replace this with a book. Book, and if it's less than book pages dot count, Yeah, so this is going to be it. I think that's it. Let's see. Let's see if it works. But yeah, I, ideally, I should be able to generate books automatically. <coughs> is there some kind of a secret C sharp thing about word wrapping? Automat text editor understand C sharp word wrapping word wrap a string in multiple lines. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Okay, let's see. Let's see what is going on. Um, so pro for execute close and lock to ch okay, something is wrong. <laughs> it's not showing the first line. It's not showing the first line and document procedure. Okay, so it says four or six, but it doesn't actually work. Uh, item four doesn't actually work. Oh, I know what's the problem. I think the problem is, yeah, let's see item one. Okay, there it is. It has, it has repainted. Did I forget to clear? Probably. I probably forgot to clear. Right? Here, when I say active program, if parsing is correct, command clear. And if parsing is incorrect, right? I need to say, uh, right line error parsing error something like that bad parsing I don't know <laughs> bad this is and this is gonna be else no pages Pages page doesn't exist, something like this. <coughs> Prefer as span over substring when span based overloads are available. Interesting. Interesting. So you can do a span. Ah, interesting. This one actually doesn't use, doesn't re reallocate, right? Doesn't create a new string, it just takes a span. Cool. Nice to know that there is a span. <clears throat> now and yeah that's actually a pretty new feature that I'm not used to like the span yeah you can optimize strings really a lot in C sharp now okay so uh, program 4 there it is uh, item 2 
item one, item three, no, item three, page doesn't exist. Ah, it's item zero. <laughs> Close and lock hatches on both sides. Item one. Next valve, next to the port, to the open position. Yes, it's actually, uh, the problem is, <laughs> the problem is that there was no, uh, yeah, yeah, and I know what's going on now. Uh, the problem is that the first page is, of course, zero, but <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want to actually add a, a page num is going to be yeah if page num is more than one and less than count plus one uh, and then i'm gonna minus one so that you actually have pages one two three instead okay uh, and then for the books for listing the books i'm gonna say item plus plus page num. And I can say use use or something like that. <clears throat> Um, yeah, and the problem is that here I'm using a hard-coded value of 3, but I actually know what the lines are. Lines length. There it is. Okay, the T is over. All right, <coughs> oh, I had to come in and, and then cough into the microphone. Okay, um, let's see, program four, there it is, uh, still doesn't work. What is this? Close and lock the hatches on both sides. The first line is still missing. The first line is missing because this should show, okay, so I'm guessing it's actually one less. Uh, so not visible, but minus one. And then we should be, you know, doing everything. I'm thinking, you know, if I can find a good word wrap, 
if I can find a good word wrapping uh, algorithm, I can put any book in here in my computer. Pro for document procedure. Okay, use item plus page num item five. Execute. The page doesn't exist. Okay, item one, execute. There it is. Uh, item two, execute. There it is. Extract error from the vestibule. Set the vest next to the port to the open position. Mmm, beautiful. Uh, item three, if you hear a low, low pressure alarm, Intel Lopers illuminates red, close the valve immediately and recheck if hatch has been properly closed. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. This is totally readable, actually. This is totally readable. I thought it was going to go be like too small or something. And, and I mean, I'm actually playing in windowed mode. <coughs> so yeah. And of course, I can turn it off. If I just want or, or, or lower the brightness. Nice. Okay. Oh. Looks good. It looks good. There. We have a few programs for reading some checklists. Okay. Let's do... Let's try to find a, a word wrap. Hmm, wrap text. Okay, somebody has provided. Here's a version I came up with my XNA game. It's using a string builder as well. Let's see. Let's try to do this. Let's try to do this. <laughs> Rap text. Okay. String double pixels. Font family. Okay. This is actually pixel. Pixel perfect. No, I actually need characters. <laughs> Is this for Unity? I'm not sure. Uh, here's a game that I came up with. Line width. Yeah, this is with the line width. Oh, this is actually string width. text render yeah no I actually just want wrapping by number of uh, number of uh, text yeah You just call the word wrap extension method. Where is the word wrap? No. 
I guess you need to sign in to download it or something. Oh, your code. Where is it? This is the one. Is there like a string utility inside it? Inside the string utility, string extensions. count Yeah, I don't know if there is actually a built-in thing. Word wrap. Max line length. Yeah, maybe this one. That's right. Uh, aha, it gives you a list of strings. Perfect. Perfect for me. Okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna log this guy. Thanks to and I'm gonna put a link <clears throat> so yeah it returns a list white space well this would be great to be const can it be const I don't think so no but I can put it outside as well Oh, it's all uh, this one is also creating a new oh fuck <laughs> look at this line if it is more than this then do this and instead do this last index of any Okay, so what I want to do is <coughs> I want to create a new book. Okay, let's do, I don't know, uh, test book, wrap test book, something like that. It's gonna be a new book. And the pages are going to be a wrap, uh, word wrapped. Okay, let's just go book here. Okay. Now, oh, I can just do this. It's a new book. Uh, but when I actually create, yeah, when I, when I call it for the first time, it's in, hmm? Okay, let's do it here. Let's do it here. Um, execute command. So first time I execute command. I'm going to say if wrap. You know what? I haven't fork. I haven't uh, added this for a while. Okay, let's see this. 
uh, checklist checklist um, flipping pages of a checklist on the computer okay so that's one thing wrap test book okay and there's more there's if wrap test book is null i'm going to create a new a new book okay and the pages of the book are going to be new list of strings no it's actually going to be a word wrap word wrap of a some kind of a long string let's try <coughs> oh but i actually need to flip i actually want to split the lines as well uh let's find something more interesting after capture hatch opening hmm activating controls and let's do this after capture thing let's see if it's gonna work so I'm just gonna give it this um, this thing oh it actually copied correctly with all the R and N's interesting Okay, um, let's do this uh, string after capture is. So it does actually add new lines. But if I do this, then it doesn't add new lines. Interesting. Yeah. <coughs> let's try that just for a test. Okay. So after capture, after capture, let's do a word wrap. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, word lines is word wrap. And we're going to do after capture. Let's call this after capture text. and maximum line length is going to be 27. So now we have the lines. The problem is that we need to split these lines into pages. So I need to take the maximum of all the book. Uh, so lines, okay. I create a new book. And rep test book pages is going to be new list of strings. Wait, I'm actually adding. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. I forgot that I'm actually adding this. Yeah, right. I have to join it up. So first I split it. And then basically, yeah, I need to, I need to split these lines into chunks. How do I do this? For, oh my God, it's already half past four. Uh, for lines dot count yeah let's do like a last last line zero Yeah, actually, I, what I need to do 
is I need to find the number of pages. So I know I can fit, I can fit, well, let's not do this 27. Instead, I'm going to do terminal width. That's what I know. And terminal height is going to be Yeah, this is going to be like a while. The last line. No. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna. I'm definitely gonna increment something by the number of. Okay, last line plus equals CMD terminal visible. Get visible line count. Wait. Visible output lines count. <laughs> this is actually a wrong thing because this is the absolute thing. So this should be actually the, be the maximum. Max visible output line count. Yeah, so I, I increase it by this every time. <coughs> mm. And then I need to join the lines. So yeah, I'm going to have a line buffer. Uh, list of strings Yeah, just new lines buffer is gonna be like Can I do a range? Uh huh. Yeah, it is actually this. What does it say? Cannot be applied to operands of range and int because it needs to be this. Can I convert system range to int? I thought this was the way you get it. Okay, C sharp range list. Mm. 
Well, yeah, you could get a range. Okay, yeah, let's do... It does do a copy. Yeah, whatever. I just want to I just want to implement it as fast as possible now. Uh, so this is going to be lines buffer. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to add range. Wait. Oh yeah, right. I keep forgetting that hmm, it needs to be a string. Join. No, it's not actually. It's not actually part of link. String join. Yeah, it is actually string join. Oh, start index and count. Yes. Start index, uh, starting with the element and value from start index. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, so I can actually use, I don't need the buffer. I, didn't, I don't need the buffer at all. I can just do, okay. So the separator is gonna be n the uh, values are going to be lines, and then we're going to add begin. Start index is going to be last line, and last line plus max visible output lines. <coughs> Definitely this. And then we're going to do a plus equals. And finally, this is going to be a string page, wrap test is going to be page, yeah, book, I create a book, and then yeah, I, I can calculate the number of pages. Pages count is actually the uh, number of lines divided by max visible output lines, right? So 10 by 3 is going to be 3.3, .3, so that means 4. Good. So 4 P for page. Pages count. Okay. For pages count. There it is. So max visible lines, but the problem is. <coughs> For the last one, there's going to be less. There's going to be less. Let's see if it is actually. Count. Concatenates. The formality to continue starting with the element in the start X. Wait. The separator lines start and end starting with the element in the start index okay so this is actually the 
max visible. I wonder if it's going to say wrong index. So maybe I need to max it. Okay, rep pages is like, uh, oh yeah, what do I actually do with the page? Uh, yeah, rep test pages book dot pages dot add page. Yeah, but I need to make sure that the pages are a new list as well. There we go. Hopefully this works. And this is going to be pro pro five. So let's, let's make a new one. I'm not going to wait for this one. Um, and the book is going to be Let's do like a show page or something here. Show page, show book, book, book. So I'm going to uh, Oh, yeah, the active program. Which one does it become? Uh, I'm gonna have to do like a uh, active books thing. Um, let's do active book. No. So yeah, let's not do checklist, but I'm gonna do a reading book. So yeah, when you show book, you're going to say book, book. So active book, active book becomes book. And then, yeah, we have the undocking checklist. Yeah, we're going to do like uh, active book, active book, show page zero. Oh, is book, not this one. Okay. So we're going to show book, show book. And this is going to be the checklist and docking checklist. And in this case, uh, show book is going to be the other one. It's going to be show book. Uh, what's the name of it? test book. Wrap test book. There we go. Okay, so what I do here is instead of pointing with the undocking, I'm just going to say active book. Okay. And whenever you switch a program, you should also deactivate a book, an active book. This is true, starts with pro. Yeah, whatever you start with pro, I'm going to make the active book null. <coughs> Maybe I should have like a reset state or something. Yeah, but let's keep it like this. Okay, so first I need to make sure that let's see if uh, if my book even works. Okay, if I can finally go to sleep. Oh, hello. Hello. Mr. Cobalt. Yes, I'm going to sleep. Don't worry. Oh, and my and I just knocked with my tea. I knocked the microphone. I'm so angry. Okay, let's see. Any bugs? Any bugs? Any meaningful bugs? Terminal. Uh, no reference exception. Clear. Okay, uh, I don't think this is meaningful. Oh no, it has started to be fucked up again. Thank you. Thank you, Godot. Thank you, Godot, for uh, randomly choosing to...
yeah let's go with the uh, pro 4 okay undocking procedure then no let's go with pro 5 the, should it work I know command <coughs> okay well first we need to rebuild we need to rebuild the cache because Godot has failed not this one uh, Godot Godo, 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 limb space. Uh, I need to kill Godo. Shader cache. Okay, kill it. Kill the shader cache. Okay, restart. Restart Godo. You know what? I don't need. I don't need this one anymore. So I'm just gonna save and close um let's see if it works hello threateningly <laughs> yeah so i didn't have any bug for my oh what is this why did i not save this there's the bear interesting that joining worked but uh, maybe it doesn't work <laughs> okay so if rep test book is no um lines of no 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 rags pages add page boozy 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 is true starts with pro okay let's see pro 5 oh i actually made a copy else if pro 5 rep test book okay okay so i can do What can I do? I can do program five, execute. Ah, wow. System collections generic. It's actually outputting an error <laughs> in the console. <laughs> what the fuck? This is so weird. Wait, why, why did it output a C sharp error. I don't know. I don't know why it outputted a C sharp error. System collection is generic, but it still works, no? No, it doesn't. Oh, okay, it does work. I don't command. Okay. Uh, clear. Let's do program one execute. Hello. Okay, that works program three execute uh nope item one no something is broken program three oh it's a clear that's why Program four is the book. There it is. Undocking procedure. Yes. Item two. There it is. It's the second page. So, yeah. Item three. Third page. Item. Yeah. Item four doesn't work. But anyway. <coughs> Clear. Let's go back to program one hello uh, item program five system collection generic 
it's a type with no string with no two string yeah it's actually it's not an error actually yeah that's actually that that, that makes sense that makes sense that makes sense <coughs> so what what am i trying to do let's let's backtrack uh, show book i'm doing a show book active book show page So I'm doing show page, show page zero, and I'm reading a book. So what happens? I clear the output, I take the lines, I split them, <coughs> and then I write them. Uh, pages are a string. Mm -hmm. So yes, the pages are not. The pages have not been co uh, correctly created. Pretty sure. Okay, let's do a minus one here. Just to test. Uh, let's actually test how many how many lines is there. GD lines, uh, GD print. Lines. All right. Let's see how many how many it actually creates. <coughs> I should add a blue screen of death as well. So if, if there is an error like that, <laughs> a null reference or something. The strange thing is that that I'm not. I'm not doing a two string ever. Yeah, there's something weird going on. Okay, pro five, there it is. It's still there. Um, what the hell? How is it possible? Because pro four is using exactly the same thing. Okay, let's see what the, what did the output say? Lines 41, pages four. Pages four. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So active program. Reading book. show page a line is a string okay uh, maybe the split fails does it? Mm. Maybe this is a null. Can I do an assert?
Program five. What does it say? Mm, there's no assertions. That broke. So yeah, let me actually output everything that I'm trying to do. Right line. GD print. Let's do it like this. Stir. Five AM, cool. So yeah, let's see. What's going on here? Uh, system collection generic list. So I'm trying to output a, a list of strings somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <coughs> instead of strings themselves. This is a string, uh, this is a string array. Okay, so it must be in the show book thing. Show book, active book, show page. It must be here. Definitely this. What is the zero zero after afterwards in a new line? Time is at its end. What is this? Yeah, happy new month. <coughs> um, I don't know. What am I doing? What am I doing? I am outputting a line so it's got to be here. This thing pages. So here's what is happening, right? I'm trying to split. Ah. Let's do just new line and then I'm going to trim. No, wait, splits. Okay. Trim here. Yeah, this must be because Okay, I think I know. It's because I'm merging these lines here. Okay. 
Okay. Let me actually output these lines. GD print page. And I'm going to do here page P. Okay, what does it say? No output? Oh yeah, because it needs to run at least once. And there it is. Okay, so let's see. There it is. <coughs> Page zero, mm, generic list, zero, zero. N generic list, zero, zero. List, 27, zero. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay. So yeah, something is I'm trying to join. I'm trying to join lines or wrap What is going on here? <laughs> Are you Russian? Your name is Ivan. More debug logs, more debug logs. Yeah. <coughs> I'm not Russian. I'm, I'm Serbian. Uh, pages count. Lines count. What am I doing here? Okay, I, I just, I must be doing something stupid. Uh, let's just do the, ca let's just do the lines. Just, just output the lines. Uh, line and lines. GD print line. Okay, so there it is. Here are all the lines. So the lines are good. The two cries are approximately aligned and all three axes aligned will be eliminated green. Retract the duck imports. This looks good for me. What is this weight? Weight. Let's press. Okay, so the lines are fine. The lines are fine. It's the it's the way that I'm joining these lines. That's the problem. String join concatenates a string represented in an array of objects using the specified separator between each member. Returns a string that contains of all the elements of values delimited by the separator character. Or string 
that empty if values has zero elements. So obviously lines is not Oh, I see what's happening. It's a params array. Oh, is it? Values of what? No, but it should be using this overload. No? Which overload is it using? Are you kidding that it's using a wrong one? Params of object. Uh, I want to use this one. So do I need to make my Okay. How does join work? I think you are passing a list of random parameters you want to join. Oh, that's why those numbers are there. Then it makes sense to tell what variable do you want. <coughs> okay, uh, C sharp join. Well, this is the problem with uh, overloads <coughs> that I actually want to use this overload. Right, I want to use this overload, but it's getting confused, I guess. I want this one. I want a separator, I have a value, I have a start index, and I have the, the count. But it's obviously using a wrong one. by saying one of the variable names. Oh yeah, let's see if I can do that. Start index, right, like this, and index. Yeah, and there it is, now it's incompatible. Mm, and, no, what's the name of it? Count. Okay, let's go with count. Yeah, so what does it say? Can I convert from string to string? Oh, it is a list. That is why. Is there some kind of a non-list thing? No, it's actually really simple. To array, I guess. I'm gonna have to, to array it. <laughs> okay, well, I, I can do it one at once. Why do I have a feeling like it worked with... Uh... Linz. Hmm. Why do I have a feeling it worked with... Uh, pre with uh, when I did it before? <coughs> Who is Lin? That's what my girlfriend asks. Uh, are you my girlfriend? <laughs> Just asking me like most suspicious people. Uh, tell if overlaying you want to be saying one of the variable names. Yeah. Anyway, let's. Um, Let's say pro five. There it is. Ah, but if for some reason it's not. 
extinguished. Make sure the two crafts are approximately aligned. Why is it? Okay. Let's see. Item. Item two. Okay. Item. No. Uh, item one. Yeah, what is this? Align latches for hard capture. Press the line button. This is a wrong page. It's showing this one. Okay, uh, another bug I have. Jesus, I'm not. I'm never going to go to sleep now. Wait, why am I adding last line over here? I should be doing this only in the in the loop. Damn it. Okay, there it is. Okay, let's go all the way to the end. Now let's see what happens. I like how you wanted to go back two hours ago. Yeah, I know. What can I say? Classic. And now I'm going to finish this and I'm going to be like, ah, ah, I wonder what happens if I... No, I'm not going to. Pro 5. There, uh, pfft, again. Again, it's a wrong thing. What is this? All three axes aligned will be... No, where's the beginning? Fuck this shit. Item one. All three axes. Item two. Extinguished probe moving. Illuminated yell. Wait. It says wait. Extinct wait extinguished. Yeah, this is completely completely wrong. Okay. Let me actually make a page break here. For each page pages count, I'm gonna increase by max visible output lines. <coughs> oh, this actually should be minus one because because I have the little footer down there. So this should be again minus one but that doesn't change anything uh, GD print page plus P mm hmm yeah and I'm gonna I'm going to do this so they can see which page is which. <laughs> yeah, let's let's hide this. For now. Okay. Mm. 
Oh well, yeah, there's nothing in the output because I need to run it first. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, page zero, after capture, there it is. Make sure the two crafts are approximately the line in the axis. It's green. Uh, replace, why is there a hyphen in one? Replace the docking probe, press probe retract button. Will be, probe moving, will be illuminated. Where is the illuminated? <laughs> will be extinguished retract the power button okay page zero okay for probe to retract probe will, uh, will be extinguished align latches for hard capture press align button for the align system two will be illuminated green <laughs> This is completely weird. Uh, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> okay, I think it's completely bonkers, but let's see. No, I wanted to do pro. Pro 5 execute. Did you, uh, why is it still the wrong page? What the fuck is going on? Okay, let's let's reprint these all the lines. Okay, let's do this. End of all lines. Ah, it's this one. Yeah, let's not do this minus one. Let's do a, yeah, I can do a const. I can do a visible output lines, uh, max lines. Let's do just that. So max visible minus one. And we're going to replace this with max lines. And then I'm going to replace this with max lines. And I'm going to replace this with max lines. Let's see now. <coughs> what sort of commands are ex executed? What sort of commands? I don't understand the question. I mean, it's, it's this thing. <laughs> for, for reading a book, a checklist, basically. But I'm now right, uh, right now I'm uh, s like string, uh, messing with strings, pro five, execute, the two crats are approximately aligned in all three axes. Yeah, anyway, let's look at this. Let's look at this, what is going on? Okay, so this is, okay, here are the lines, okay? Line after capture make sure why is it the new line oh my god all of these need to be split into new lines as well i think this is this is what is messing it up it's messing it up because this needs to be split as well Okay, I have an idea. It's a super dirty idea, <coughs> but it's an idea, okay. So basically, with this word wrap splits into lines, right? It will create arrays, it will create arrays like this. But the problem is that one of these arrays could have a new line, which it doesn't handle. So this is a problem. Uh, so basically, <laughs> what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to split lines, right? I'm going to split lines. Which one is, does it actually use for uh, for wrapping? Mm, well, it's not wrapping. Okay. So uh, I'm going to join these lines. Uh, well, string join lines. Oh, this is the separator. Separator is n lines. There we go. <laughs> so we're going to have a new new string combined. Let's call it combined. And then I'm going to make the lines again by splitting. Oh, that's going to be the lines array. Yeah, let's do a lines array is going to be a combined split. Let me just add a little comment because word wrap doesn't split um, already existing new lines. Hack because word wrap doesn't support. Okay, so lines array, I'm going to split by new line. So I combine and then I split. And now this is going to be wrong, right? We have these lines. And these lines are, yeah, I'm actually using pages count. No, I'm, I'm going to use the array instead. This is going to be array length. And this is going to be line lines array length and this is going to be for each line in lines r okay and finally it's going to be line so so lines are not used anymore beyond this point right let's make sure that it's they're not used no okay and this is going to be it I'm going to go to sleep. <coughs> okay, hopefully this fixes it. If it doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just going to go sleep. Program 5. Active capture. Finally, we have the title. Let's see. Let's see. After capture, make sure you have a limited uh, well we can actually read in game after capture make sure the two crafts are approximately aligned in all three axes um, aligned will be illuminated green and then there is a nothing <laughs> why is there a nothing mm, because it's a uh, what why does it split here? Okay, there is obviously something wrong with this word wrap, but okay. There's obviously something wrong. Uh, retract the docking probe. You oh yeah, use item page num. Uh, item two. So it says retract the docking probe. Press probe retract button. That's it. Retract the docking probe. Press probe retract button. Uh, probe moving will be eliminated to yellow. Wait. Wait, and then nothing. And then there's a progress bar. It looks like a progress bar. Wait. Why did it split here? What the fuck is wrong? Okay, it's not great. It's not great. Uh, the word wrap thing is uh, obviously not not great. Uh, make sure the two crafts are approximately aligned. And then there's this hyphen yeah there's something wrong with this word wrap absolutely uh, but at least at least I have everything shown now okay 
Um, item three. Uh, align latches for hard capture. Press the line button. Uh, item four. Execute. Power latches button. Latch power will be illuminated green. Wait for latches to extend. Latches moving will be... Will be... Uh, whoops. Will be... Will be... Green. Latch press. Latches extend button. Wait for latches. Latches moving will be... Item six. So many pages. Unpower probe. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a weird new line here. Um, item... 7. Error. Page doesn't exist. Item 6. Okay, so 6 is the last page. Latch power will. Latch power will. Latch power will. Yeah. So it is missing. It's missing text. I think it's because there should be a plus one here. There should definitely be a plus one here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the weird word wrap. Okay, item, no, not this one, program 5, item 7, item 6, okay, it still doesn't, even if I added one page, latch power will be, latch power will be, Latch power will be extinguished. Hard dock incomplete. So only this thing is missing. Okay, so seven pages. <laughs> but page seven doesn't exist. I don't know. Okay, cool. So, we have tested this. Uh, it kind of works. We can go to this and we can use uh, different other uh, programs. They can also va wait. Uh, item 2. Oh, no, not item 2. Uh, program 2. Yeah, this one is wait waiting for 10 seconds. Took forever, but done. <laughs> item 3. Uh, no, not item 3. Program 3. Program 3 just clears the screen, right? And then we have the undocking procedure. Yeah, and then we have finally this one, which doesn't wait any, any, at all, but it should. Anyway, cool. We have some screens. We can connect that. We can read books. Uh, and yeah, right now, <laughs> right now they're all actually in the same. Uh, there's two screen. Uh, there's three screens here. Here's Here's two of them, and they're all connected to the same feed. Uh, so yeah, as you can see here, we have exact same, exact same th thing on three, three different screens. Cool. Okay. So next time, next up, I can actually turn these off. Uh, next time, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to, I don't know, I don't know, I don't have power anymore. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I have done everything that I plan to do, right? 
checklist program dog import status <laughs> yeah i didn't actually do this dog import status yeah i wanted to make a little program that will just output the dog imports and then make a pressure simulator no i didn't do that but i am going to do that next time so i'm not going to make it i'm not going to cancel them so yeah a little bit uh, a little uh, useful at least something useful right getting some status about the the spacecraft and yeah but yeah i should maybe add more checklists and yeah then fix fix the word wrap problem that's gonna be for the next one uh fix word wrap problem there we go okay so thank you for watching i'm going to sleep now finally uh really nice really nice functionality with the computer um okay <coughs> yeah see you next time see you tomorrow hopefully hopefully i will survive until tomorrow <laughs> uh and hopefully tomorrow i won't cough anymore that is what i'm that's the main thing i'm hoping for um okay thanks for being here uh see you see you next time bye